It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. And results. I know y'all hate when we eat on the podcast. So we I'm just trying to eat off the mic. We just giving you what you hate early to get it out the way. <laughs> okay? Now today's My bad. show. Is brought to you by the BT Hip Hop Awards. Yeah. Premiered Tuesday, October 8th at 8, 7 Central on BT. Hosted, hosted by, by. Hosted by. My guy, our guy, little motherfucking Duval. Mm. Duval. Y'all Duval. very late, BET, but you know what? I guess, you know. Better late than never. Better late than never. I mean, it is. The black entertainment. No? It late is. jokes? It okay. Is. It is. A little late jokes? Late jokes? <laughs> late jokes early? Late jokes early? Late jokes early in the show? Huh? 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 <laughs> in and out? Yeah. All right. <laughs> but, uh, they, they premiere Tuesday, October 8th at 8, 7 Central on BET. Chance the Rapper, Megan The Stallion. Uh, plus the I Am Hip Hop Icon Award goes to legendary multi-platinum superstar Little Kim. Wow. Uh, that tribute is going to be very dope. Or should I say hardcore, since that's the name of Lil' Kim's debut album. Search with hashtag... Hip hop awards for more, and trust me, you do not want to miss the opening of the BET Hip Hop Awards. Okay, trust me. All right, Lil Duval is my guy, so you can trust me on this one. We are supporting. We are watching, as Charlemagne says, as a family. Uh, the uh, this episode is also brought to you by whatever uh, better help. Okay, whatever struggles you are facing from depression to, and anxiety to trauma and grief, better help can connect you with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient you can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text with your therapist and. Anything you share is completely confidential. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Our listeners get 10% off your first month with the discount code IDIOTS. So why not get started? Simply go to betterhelp.com slash idiots and fill out a questionnaire to get matched with a counselor you'll love today. All right, let's start the motherfucking show. Yeah. Uh, we got any church announcements? I know Andrew, <clears throat> Andrew, you was in Australia, right? Yeah, I was in Australia, man. Thanks, everybody who came out to the shows in Australia. That, that was absolutely insane. That was a, uh, you know, to... to to touch on something we are going to get to later on the the podcast, a humbling experience, man. We we had uh, literally we sold out every show uh, while we were out there. We added shows. I mean, it was it was really really fucking cool. It was cool to go out there to Australia. Australia is an interesting place, closest place I've ever been to America mm-hmm. in terms of culture. Like even more American than Canada. Really? Yeah, they are American as fuck. But you're thirty. It takes thirty hours to get there. What does it say about me? And, you know, we got my guy, Ryan Holiday. He's one of my, my, my favorite authors. You know, he wrote uh, uh, Ego is the Enemy, Obstacle is the Way, Trust Me, I'm Lying. Uh, I read his Daily Stoic every day. Um, he's got a new book out called Stillness is the Key. We're going to get into all of that later on. But I, I, want, I want Ryan to jump in on this. And, and Andrew, tell me, what does it mean about me when you tell me you went to Australia and the first thing I want to do is ask you, how was the pussy? <laughs> Ryan? Because I'm living like Harrison <laughs> through you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ryan, talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw some kangaroos. Oh. I'll tell you about that. Okay. Um, no. So not the pouches I want to know about. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm in a relationship, bro. I'm good. I was good. Oh. Yeah, I was good down under. Okay. White yeah, men don't yeah. cheat. No, white men do. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> I ain't gonna set that bar that high. What does that mean to me, Ryan? I feel like, what does that mean? Uh, it means you're fucked up, man. <laughs> really? <laughs> Damn. I, I imagine the pussy is the same pussy in all places you in think? the world. I think I don't think pussy changes that much it's size wise. My region? Yeah, I mean only <laughs> dicks apparently grow when the color changes, but but <laughs> pussies don't get any different in size. Have you noticed that in your experience? What do you mean? Like Ryan, you mean I think we've got women? your daily stoic for tomorrow. You mean like various women? Yeah, like I yeah, don't think yeah, some like, are a little I more like, shallow than others. You've noticed shallower pussies based on race? Yes. Really? Race. Who's size. got the shallowest to you? Probably <laughs> tread lightly. <laughs> tread lightly. No, probably Here we go. Women. Charlemagne says white women got the tightest pussies. They sell tight. out, it's shallow. When you Shallow. hit the bottom, you can hit the bottom easier. Oh, when wouldn't you hit the speed bag. Like, wouldn't that have to do with like average height? Couldn't, if, if there's a race component here, we'd be like, what? With the smallest, the people who are typically the smallest, uh-huh. that's where it's going to be the smallest, right? Yeah, but a baby got to no, come out of there. No, it's usually the opposite. Okay. It's usually the shorter ones. Got the biggest pussy. Not bigger, but. Proportionally speaking. Shallower. No, deeper. 
So deeper. But the taller ones and the bigger ones usually have the more shallow. Why? Why would that ever be that way? I don't know. That's just been my experience. So you're you don't think it's tall girls trying to front like they got a small pussy because they know they got a big one. They're like, oh, how do you do that? <laughs> like you put a little bit in, you're like, oh, it's so far. Right. It's then like... you got this for your next book. <laughs> I'm just <conversation. laughs> Penetration is positivity. By Ryan Holiday. Positive penetration. <laughs> penetration is the key. By Ryan <laughs> Insert the key. <laughs> but, but you had fun in Australia, though. dude. Australia was great, man. Yeah. We 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 met fucking kangaroos. And koalas and uh we had a good time out here there like the people are, are great that's what i'll say the experience is if you go to australia you're not going there for like the art or the music or anything like that that's not the culture that they provide whereas like you go to france you're gonna go to some fucking museums and shit and see some old paintings but uh but for Australia, the people themselves are the culture. Yeah. They have like nicknames for everything. Yeah, they shorten everything. It's like sunglasses are sunny. Sunnies. Yeah, they just and like, avocados, oh. avos. You yeah, know, breakfast. Well, transgenders brekkie. would get offended. Over oh, there, they would. Me. <laughs> 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 I have one come to my show in Australia. Yeah, yeah, she really liked they got them the, in Australia. Oh, dude, they got them, bro. <laughs> wow, yeah, for sure, dude, they got them. This one, this one was there. She's, she was I from think, there? Yeah, she listened to Brilliant Idi- Idiots. I think. Wow, I was I idiots to you. Or play, yeah, but it was cool, and she loved my uh, tranny joke. She was like, I agree with you on that one. I had this Wait, that is short? No, I, yeah, it was it was short, but I also had this one about how Caitlyn Jenner could transition back with a wet wipe. And he was like, uh, or she was like, she was like, I'll be honest, I'm one of those trans people that could transition back very quickly. I need the context of the joke. I don't understand. Meaning like, she doesn't look that much like a lady. Like if you just kind of oh, just check out the makeup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, but, you, this, you, but this trans chick had a great sense of humor about it. And she came to the show and it was, it was just, yeah, it was just awesome. Don't y'all think that's really quality, man? What's that? If we all can make jokes on each other, like they're not, they're not harmful. They're not, we're not trying to offend. We just... Fucking with each other, like if I can't make, I make fun white of you, jokes I don't to shows. You make black jokes to me. We make That's jokes it. to our gay friends. Gay friends make jokes back to us. Like, why can't we do? Why should point at Dwayne? <laughs> Actually, the point in the middle. It's a neutral area, right? There. That's the gay area. <laughs> <laughs> I just pointed at that neutral area. The gay area is the area saying, between why, Dwayne and Alex. <laughs> don't you think that's the, that's the key to getting to true equality? Well, so that's the problem. Is we the way we've taken it now to mean is that we think that saying something offensive is something that is done to you, right? So it's like you say something and you can perpetrate an offense on me. Now, you, people can certainly say shitty things, mm-hmm. but the reality is it takes two to be offended, mm. right? Because so Epictetus, one of the Stoke Fosters, he goes like, whenever you're offended, you have to accept that you're complicit in the offense, right? Because think about it. It's like you can say something and then I can decide that you're joking or I can decide like he is a trying to attack me as a person and I have been harmed by this. Mm-hmm. So society, what we it's it's a weird thing we do to people that we 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 think are like sort of a, a minority or a, a, a unprivileged group is we say this person is incapable of not being a victim that mm. they are in inha- like that they are incapable of deciding to laugh at like it's condescending trans people or or actually probably just like uh white people with nothing to do they're like she shouldn't have laughed at your joke like, oh that's, yeah like, they want to yeah, yeah, yeah. take the sovereignty of that trans person mm-hmm. away from that's why I thought the Comedy Central roast with Caitlyn Jenner on it was it's awesome. Great. She was, la- she was. They were, they were like, "You're a true equal. You got up here just yes. like everyone else. Got your balls busted. No <laughs> pun intended. Yeah. And and like, uh, and that's that's what life is. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go, Ryan. That was a good one, Ryan. Okay, was, was you up there? <laughs> I, was, I really feel like that's the that's the key to true equality because you think about the things that bring people together. What brings people together? Humor. Humor. It's humor. Food. Food. Music. Music. music, that's it. And drugs, okay? <laughs> all right? Those are the things that bring people together. Not all music. And so what does it say now? That's true. Not I, even all music. No, you're right. Bro, Not I all was, music. I was at the New York Philharmonic last night. Mm-hmm. Have you been to the New York Philharmonic? No. You haven't been there? It's just like that orchestra. Have you been to it? This is where Jews go before they die. I think they take <laughs> one last step. And it's, this is their last experience. There, everybody there was 99 years old and Jewish. And I didn't see anybody that wasn't white or Asian. White or Asian, that's nobody else. Asians were half of the ones that were playing the instruments. Unbelievable amount of Asians playing the instruments. And it was what now, uh, listen, maybe I'm not cultured. I don't know. 
Asians are booming in the instruments nowadays, though. Oh, they've been booming, Asians bro. are playing. <laughs> no, for real, Asians are doing opera. <laughs> They fucking with them, uh, the keyboards now? Am I like, am I getting No, strings. Right? Strings, violin, it's bro. Strings? Cello. Well, opera. Yeah. They big with opera, but I'm continuing. I'm they sorry. love it. And, um, dude, it's like one long song, bro. It's one long song with like an intermission. And then it feels like you're just listening to the same song. What were you doing then? I took my girl. I, I, you know, it was like, you got to do but isn't dress up now, shit. Music you know? wise, like we're also going like certain people aren't allowed to make different kind like, you can't do that because that's cultural appropriation or you can't do this because... Like, Are Asians allowed to make... Well, that's what's so funny is we can go, of course, Asian people can perform like white music, but like if I was to, if someone else was to go the Ooh. other way, that's not okay. Good question. Well, I mean, you know, Should so we funny. get these Asians out of this uh, Philharmonic? <laughs> How does Philharmonic feel about it? I don't even know. What is Philharmonic? I don't know. Yeah, they're, steal they're stealing our They're culture. stealing our fucking culture, man. You know what's so interesting about that? Um, everybody gets mad at cultural appropriation. Like, people try to make it like it's just a, a hip-hop thing. Yeah. But no. Just, just go back to earlier this year when Lil Nas X came on the scene with That's that true. goddamn Old Town Road. Country people was like, fuck no. Which Not, country people? They was like, this ain't country. Go to those country festivals. They were listening oh, to no. it. He, he eventually won them over. But initially. At first, they were a little like, what is this? I don't even, buy they, that, They bro. wouldn't even label it country music. They wouldn't put it on the country charts. But that's the chart people. You'd think all the people boosting those streams, making it number one, didn't like it. They he kept playing the it over and over again. They did the coastline. Billy Ray. That's what did. That's what did. No, it was hot before people. Billy Ray. Nah, that's why Billy, Billy Ray. Ray did it. But B see, I Billy think, Ray did it to say, fuck them. I say, I fuck you, country But it was already number one before Billy Ray. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. What I, was it charting at before Billy Ray? Look, look that up. And shout out to Blanco Brown, because he got the get up or whatever. You know that song? No. Nah. Oh, that's another black country hit. What is it? Black country banger, bro. Hold on, let me get my phone. Take out. The get up. <laughs> Dude, this shit goes right, right. What, what I think is, it's like, look, like we don't need a term cultural appropriation. It's either it either sucks or it's good. Like yes. we already have a term. It's bad art, right? Like yes. it's it's either it's either done well, like in in Lil Nas's case, and it's good, or it sucks, and that's why it's offensive. Not because like white <laughs> people shouldn't do it. Do you yeah, know what I mean? right. Like, I think people go like, oh, Elvis. Uh, you know, Elvis stole like, you know, music from black people. It's like Elvis was also paying a 90% marginal tax break. <laughs> uh, like that's what taxes were back then. It's like it evened out, man. Like, oh, yeah. You know it went I mean? back like, to some folks. Yeah, went, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, it, I don't know. It, these well, people just want to complain, dog. That's what taxes were back then. What do you mean? Break it down. The Tax richest rates people in the fifties, sixties, and seventies was like ninety percent over like a certain amount. Of, like the idea that like Elvis was just like taking his all for himself. It's like what are you talking? You about? think he wanted like to live in Memphis? That's the only place he could afford. But was it going to black communities? Um, yeah, a little bit. No, it wasn't right. I mean, when you when you divvy up the taxes, right? It's like the whole point of that is for wealth to disparity. Help the point, to help the point is that, the what I'm saying is it wasn't like raping the earth of natural resources that yeah, like yeah, nobody yeah, got yeah, the yeah. hot 100 you know? song yeah. in the world. Yeah. That's successful. It was already a hot 100 song in the world. The this is yeah, yeah, it was booming, but it did, number one was Billy Ray. What you know about this, bro? I just need you to get real loose. Get comfortable. Have I heard that? Grab your loved ones. Grab your loved ones, guys. Or your love partner is pro that's, that's progressive. That's progressive. Alex Dwayne. You know why? You know, you know why country slaps though? Because country got soul and country got stories. Mm, yeah. As long as sure. you got soul and stories, man, you can like transcend through mad motherfucking demographics. But I also think the similarity between country and rap is like, it's all, these are all personas anyway. Now these yes. people live on farms. They don't drive. They're yeah, like, it's characters. Preaching, preacher daughters and like, it's like, you didn't do any of this It's stuff. wrestling, bro. Yeah. Let it be wrestling. Just like rap is. 100%. Yeah. I don't know, bro. You go to Nashville, this shit look very stereotypical in some some places. That's what I mean. But that's bro, Nashville, I mean. a character. Nashville is like Hollywood for, for country. country. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, fake lips, fake tits, the whole thing. I love Nashville, by the way. Amazing city. But it's not like Preacher's Daughter, like you're trying to think. It is, it is like it is Hollywood. You're yeah. on Sunset Boulevard. But I agree with you about the cultural appropriation thing. It's like, like, what do we think about, okay, what do you think about that Trudeau when he put on the uh, blackface a million so times? So that's not cultural appropriation. That's just stupid and dumb. Do you know what I mean? Like, why are you dressing up like a, why, are you, like, what you're saying is that you think black people look like this and they don't. Well, they do look more like that than his skin. 
<laughs> sure. But what I'm saying is like, why right? are you saying that what they look like, like to me, blackface is offensive for a couple of reasons. And you should say well, it's really offensive, but it's offensive because one, uh, the historical it, it, implications, it, it, historical implications. Yes. And you're just being, you're, you're, you don't actually know what you're doing. You're just being ignorant of that. And then the other thing is it's cartoonishly presenting these traits, which is what a Halloween costume is, right? So, sort of. It, it goes to your like, point about bad art. Yeah, to me, it's blackface bad. is it's, bad art. It's yeah. whack, but like, it has a historical uh, uh, implication, right? Which is there were a time where they didn't allow black people to be in these movie roles, and they had white actors put blackface on them, and then even satirized them more and made them these cartoonish. It, it wasn't even that they would, would, didn't allow them; it was the fact that they looked at black people with such disgust they would rather pretend to be one yeah, than have sure. one actually in yeah, a play right. or something. Well, and, and I totally. think you're also saying that like, okay, if I want to be Jay-Z for Halloween, that Jay-Z's primary characteristic is his skin. Like if you were going to be Bruce It's a big Spring, one. If you were going to be, no, no, it's not. Like if you're going to be Bruce Springsteen for Try to Halloween, wrap those songs without his skin color. your skin white? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Bruce Springsteen is the bandana, bandana yeah, and, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. and the guitar and yeah. the beard and the hair. Like you can, get the, you, you can get the essence of it yeah, it helps I, though. I, think, I think that's the problem is we're going like the, the 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 costumes are really mostly in bad taste because you're saying the essence of the person is their skin color no but it's a part of it it's I like i love this conversation it's close to halloween let's get into it no but it's a it's like if you're gonna dress up as the hulk you're gonna be green look here's the, i guess what i'm trying to take the away hulk from, skin matters more to the the, to, the, the if you're the playing the hulk the, the green skin actually matters more than playing a black person right because you can't put on some short ripped jeans and no shirt and then not put the green skin on. Person. That's yeah. it. You know what I mean? That's what, so that's what I'm you saying. Like you're so a like, fucking Burning Man. Who, 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 <laughs> say again? Who was he trying to be? Do we know? I don't know. Jafar or something? He was trying he was to... At a, no, he, was, he, he was wasn't this? trying to be black. He was trying to be fucking well, Arabian. No, he had a bunch of different ones. ones. He did oh, black one where he was oh. this Jamaican singer and he like performed it as uh, oh, I Jamaican. <laughs> I mean, my biggest issue with him is not necessarily that he did it, is that he fronted to be this like woke guy for this whole time knowing full well that he was just as is the problem. Yeah, he's you a were, hypocrite. You were being hypersensitive and attacking other people for things that probably that came you've from done. a less worse place. Yeah, than you, you nothing pussy. wrong with that unless if you acknowledge it. If you acknowledge that you used to do this fucked up shit, that's what my, that's Malcolm X, right? Yeah. So if have the empathy for those people who yes, did as well. Be yes, like, listen, yes, yes. you don't know that you're going to regret this ten years from now. Yes, so let yes. me just talk to you. <laughs> yes. And it's like, but he didn't say that. He's like, how could you? What are we going to do? I don't even want to say that. Um, what it was, I don't, I don't want to say he tried to remove like the word male or, or man from certain job positions. Like he was on this fake, well, not policeman, yeah. it's police person, yeah. not fireman, it's fire oh, person, God. all this stupid fucking shit. But, uh, but it's an interesting thing because if you remove the historical implication, are some, you know, faces okay? Like blackface, you can't do because there was that history of oppression, but brown face when he's the Arab dude, like, could you do brownface? There's no history of not letting brown people into the movies and putting on brownface. If if blackface is the only reason why we can't do blackface because of the historical implication, can you do brownface? I've only seen it accepted once in my lifetime. And that was when Robert Downey Jr. did Tropic Thunder. But by the way, I didn't know he was playing a black person. But that's blackface. I'm saying brown. Like, if if you were to act, could you do Latin face where but you so become... What you're, like, could you do Latin what face? Needs to be, or could you could do Asian you do eyes? face? You know what I mean? Like, is new, like, what you're talking about is nuance. Like, when is it okay? When is it not okay? And yeah. the problem is, culturally, we've gone like, if you do this, you deserve to die and you should be run out of society. Like, the problem right. is, we just have no ability to have nuance. And what we've really done is we've we've weaponized it. So it's like, this is a mechanism for taking people down um, who we haven't been able to get rid of by like other means. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question, Ryan. I agree with you. Let me ask you this. At this point though, like if you do something like that right now, this Halloween, you know what the reaction is going to be. You know what the backlash is going to be. Don't you kind of deserve what you get? Well, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, it's almost not the, uh, it's not the fact that you're doing this thing that might be racist. It's like, where have you been? Right. You yes. know what I mean? Like how yes. out of touch are yes. you that you don't get that yes. we're like, hey, this is not, it's like, it's almost for me, it's just the judgment of it. Like right. you just have general but bad then judgment. But aren't you succumbing itself. to the outrage? You know, like, I, look, I understand the blackface thing and I can accept the historical implication, but not every race has gone through it. Like, like, for example, if you look back in like Shakespearean times, did they allow women to play the roles of women? No, it was dudes. It was dudes that played the roles of women. Yeah. Right. Wait so, a minute. That sounds to me like the first transgenders. Oh, we don't know if they, we don't know. Romeo and, and, and Jules. 
That's what I'm or saying. Julio, <laughs> Romeo or Julio. Julio. <laughs> I'm just saying we don't know if they were actually just pretending to be women or they identified they as women. Yeah. No, no, they were pretending, but it was because they didn't let women act. They refused to allow women to act, right? Just how they refused to allow black people to to act, act. Mm-hmm. right? And so it's wrong to put that face on. Should it be wrong for a guy to dress up as a girl in a Halloween costume because of what women endured during Shakespearean times in in the acting world? It's the same so, exact it's logic, like, right? Ca- it's like, who cares? Like, I don't give a fuck. No, no, but I saying, also that's feel... That's what I'm saying to people. It's like, why are you so... If a nine-year-old kid sees Michael Jordan and that's his hero, or Kobe Bryant or Kyrie Irving, and he's like, I want a fro and I want dark skin just like him. I think, but that's where... There's I no think racism in that. I don't it's, think there's racism, but I think that's where the parent goes like... Hey, like you really like Michael Jordan, but what you're you, what you should be seeing in Michael Jordan is not primary. We should be teaching a colorblindness in the sense of like Michael Jordan's defining characteristic is not his blackness; it's his airness. It's, oh, by he doesn't way, want to be him because he's black. That's just part of what he looks like, just like his hair. But these you, are just yeah, aspects. That's jersey. it. All yeah, you gotta do is get a it. Bulls uniform, yeah, yeah. some Jordans, and a ball I head. As far as what fucking we're trying cap. to teach, we should be primarily teaching that, like, look, the the skin color. That that's to me the big problem I have with this. Co- it's like I thought race was supposed to be coming less important, but I feel like we're just talking about it all the time. I feel like all of this shit, racism, sexism, Let me homophobia. ask you a question. Somebody breaks into your house and yeah. the cops are like, describe them. Are you yeah. going to be like, tall, uh, brown eyes? What else do you know about them? Uh, you know, you had hair. What else? Yeah, that was no, pretty no. much it because I don't really see anything. No, no, no. I don't you see don't anything. In, in, I don't see color shit is, is annoying and lame. But I, what I just mean is like, we now talk about how your blackness is your pro is is somehow like the main thing about you but to mm-hmm. me it's like for and and i just like oh, i don't see color but it, to me it's like one of the least important things about you just in the sense that like whatever my height is uh is probably like 30 on the things that are important but if you were seven me. six though mm. you know what i'm saying sure 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 but that would if i was seven six that would probably have changed the trajectory of my life in a bunch of ways that might make it more part of it. Yeah, it'd be people with Ryan Holiday jerseys on this fucking Halloween. <laughs> with white face. <laughs> I actually do have to roll this My up. guy. Be good, Thanks. man. Ryan, thank Appreciate you, man. It. Appreciate you. Right. My, no, my no. issue isn't whether it's like, it, my issue isn't whether we should be aware or shouldn't be aware of it. That's not it. Of course we should be aware. We should be sensitive. The issue is, is it hateful? And I don't think in all times it's, it's hateful. I think if you do it now, it's hateful. And I'll tell you why, because, yeah, like, I just, you have to be aware. You have to know the temperature. Like, if you know people are going to be offended by this shit, there's no real reason to do it. It's like, it's almost, it's ego when we talk about Napoleon, sure. right? Like, if there's an actual but are benefit they to what you're doing. Like, can you name a single blackface movie? Black? No, I, wasn't, I didn't grow up in that <laughs> time. Single. Hold on one second. You're oh, white. No, I, well, you're I, white. You have to. I didn't grow Dwayne, up in that time. can you name a single blackface movie? So it's like we have all these people that are being offended on behalf of a time in cinema where they don't even know a fucking movie or or can he, or has but even it, seen but a movie. It's, it's, it's a sort of context. It's the same reason you don't walk around with a swastika on your shirt. You but know, yeah, you know well, what I'm saying? But, you, but I'm American. We fought against them. Still. But why would I walk around with a swastika on my shirt if we fought against them? There's some people in America that, that rock swastikas all the time. Well, they should, go wh- to, they should go back to fucking Germany. Plenty they white live nationalists and white supremacists use the swastika as their motherfucking logo. Yo, what I don't understand is how you can be proud to be an American or whatever that bullshit they front is and wear the logo of the country that we went to war with. You're a traitor, yeah. in my opinion. It's like, yeah, 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 are you a Decepticon? Yeah. Or are you an Autobot? Pick yeah. a side, fam. You can't front like your Autobot. You're walking around with a Decepticon shit Why on do your they shoulder. Do that? Because they're fucking idiots, these people. We're, we're dealing with people who are hypocritical idiots. Clearly, they hate Jewish people more than they love America. Right? Because if you love yeah, yeah, yeah. if you loved America, you wouldn't fuck with it at all. Oh, haps, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yo, we went in there and we bodied motherfuckers. Yeah. Like, Same thing with the Confederate flag. That's the loser flag. You bro. are a you are a traitor. If yeah, you're wearing yeah, yeah. a flag, you're a traitor. As simple as that. And I can't fuck with you because you're a traitor. Stop it. Ooh, it was our history. No, it wasn't your history. They invented the flag after your history in the South existed. That's why I never understood it's the biggest bullshit. in Charleston, South Carolina, where I'm born. When they took the flag down off the state house lawn in Columbia, mm-hmm. people fought for that flag so fucking much. Like they was out there <laughs> wanting to fight because they were taking this flag down. I'm like, bro, Dylan Roof just killed 
Nine people, you know what I'm saying? It was, Bro. was praising this flag, and it's the flag of the loser. Dude, it's the loser. <laughs> it's the one that was anti-America. It was going against America. We have fought a war to reunite the, the union or the nation, if you will. It's just so stupid. But that's the thing that people don't see. And then they've been fed this propaganda that that flag represents their Southern culture. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Southern culture existed way before the secession of the South. Yeah, hundred. I mean, I, it's, it's a I rhetorical mean, it's, question. Of I mean, course, yeah, it existed. Course. As long as the South was there, yeah, they had a, they had, they had a culture. This yeah. is so. This is a flag that is that was made up to have these kind of meetings. So we don't look. I don't want to get too into the flag thing, but um, I just find the cultural appropriation, not the cultural appropriation, the 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 blackface and kind of cultural appropriation thing always interesting. Like, I need a, the better argument for blackface would be why would you want to do it. That's mm -hmm. my question. That's what I want to know. Like, like, why would you want to do it? Because that's what the character looks like. No, there's something else going on. Is there if you're nine? For, well, like for Trudeau. I'm using Trudeau as the example. And Trudeau was at, an, at the, he was at an Aladdin theme party. But here's the thing. Right? You could hey, maybe, really maybe make an argument to me that you might, I don't want to say stumble into doing blackface, but do blackface once and maybe not realize the full implications. I wouldn't believe it. Right. But you could make that argument to me. When you've done it three times that we know of, and this is something that will be a conversation later in the show, to me that represents a compulsion. Why does right. this guy want to dress up in blackface so much? Because yeah. he committed to playing a character, just like the character he's playing right now, this phony woke bullshit. Well, yeah, but he is a complete fraud. Why anybody takes that guy seriously is besides myself. Like, like, I, like, like, if you play black, if you dress as Black Panther this year, right? yeah, you don't have to wear blackface. Get the mask. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's, it's just not necessary to the costume. Even if you want to play a basketball player, you got the whole uniform, you got the shoes. I know exactly who the fuck. Wear you the warm ups. Wear cover, the warm ups. Cover as much of your skin as possible if you want. <laughs> I am going this year as a, I'm wearing an Avengers Endgame quantum suit. Right. There was no black people other than fucking War Machine who went back. I'm so, not. I don't want to be War Machine. <laughs> so who are you gonna be? Nobody. I'm just gonna be in an Avenger that had on a quantum suit. I'm not wearing a mask on no nothing. I just have on a quantum suit. You know what that is when you see it. They went back in time to get the the gather the Infinity Stones. I don't know if that's, that's it. I don't know if that's gonna hit, bro. You came <laughs> through last year with the, I was the Iron Man, you, but you you yeah, committed. Yeah, bro. before that I was Black Panther. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But even when Iron Man, I didn't put white skin. That's fucking Iron Man. Yeah, but you had the you had the face on. Yeah. Matter of fact, when you took the thing off, I was like, "Are you a black guy that stole Iron Man suit?" <laughs> <laughs> but no, that happened before. <laughs> when what? I, I mean, War Machine. War Machine wears the Iron Man suit. Oh, I thought he gave it to him. Well, he made it. Oh, yeah, nobody stole it. You're right. Somebody had to steal the suit before. But either way, yeah, I'm going as an Avenger. There yeah. was the only black Avenger that went back was War Machine. Right. I'm not. You don't want to be a war machine. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, the, I'm just that's the quantum suit. You're going to see it. Oh, that's the quantum suit. That's the suit that they went back in time with to get the Infinity Stones. You know what that is. It's the number one movie of all time. Right. That's it. Yeah. I don't have to do anything else. Yeah. I guess, I don't know. I guess people are going to be offended. I guess, I guess so, some of the things we got to recognize is like, I always think this about myself. Like, what am I told to be offended by? Like, how many of these decisions am I making myself? Yeah. And how many of these decisions are being made for me? Yeah. Right? Like, you know, like, uh, like when, when people were calling, like what you guys would call like white people mayonnaise for a while. And like, there'd be all these white people on Twitter getting so upset. Like, how can you call us mayonnaise? And I'm like, hold on. Is that, is that going to bully me into feeling like I should feel a way about that? Or is this just a joke and we should all, and we should all just laugh at these jokes. You know what's so funny about the mayonnaise thing? And maybe, maybe this is why people do blackface. The only reason I constantly keep saying Manny is because I know it makes people mad. And to me, it's the most ridiculous shit. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's not a, it's, it's some shit I made up. That's not even a slur. Yeah. You can't say that's a racial slur. Yeah. It's fucking Manny. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fact that that yeah. bothers you so much, yeah. I'm not stopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you're mad at that, yeah. and by the way, maybe that's just- I, No, it doesn't bother me personally. Oh, you're saying you, the, yeah, the, the general. greater you. Yeah, and yeah. I know it's some bullshit because in high school, I was the same way. If I said something to you, I was so upset. Yo, oh. we used to we used to call this guy Peter Pan. Why? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, because when we used to say Peter Pan is dead, he would get mad. Oh, and by okay. the way, he was autistic or something. He had a, like yeah. a little something, so it was yeah, wrong yeah, yeah, to yeah, do that. But yeah. still, it was funny because yeah. we couldn't believe that saying Peter Pan is dead would enrage this person so much. Dude, I just thought of something right now, and this could be crazy. But maybe the reason we have so many school shootings now. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> hold on. I think I'm on to something. Hold on. 
Maybe the reason we have so many school shootings now is that they separated the autistic kids, right? So now we're like bullying the normal kids that can go get a gun. Mm. But when the autistic kids were in our class, we would just kind of make fun of them. And they were autistic, so they didn't really learn all of it or they didn't really By care. autistic, we mean mentally challenged. Whatever they were. Yeah, yeah. yeah retarded. The, right? the R word. We can't yeah, yeah. Say, you can't say that anymore. But back in our day, <laughs> oh. <laughs> they were called the retarded kids. Yeah, there, there was, there capital was a, R. That was the name. Yeah. So, mentally retarded. Yeah, so the retards, we would make fun of them, right? He just came and, back from Australia. That's why he's shortening everything. Don't, take, don't be offended. <laughs> Continue. All right. <laughs> and we'd make fun of them. Now the, the kids that were like nerds, but they were normal enough to get a gun, they wouldn't get the onslaught of jokes so they weren't feeling bullied enough to go get the guns and then go kill people and then the tardies their parents would never let them close to a gun so they'd never have it in the first place yeah. maybe that's the reason why we had no school shootings we need to bring back the retards into the regular class right so we can make fun of them so they'll be the you know the the post i don't know what that's called they what were never it? in the regular class shows if you think that they were right, if, if you were in the class with them and you think that was regular, you were in the class too, bro. Was I, was I a tardy? <laughs> they weren't in the regular I class. I think I was a tardy. And the reason I know that because I failed one of those standardized tests one time and I had to be in the class they with them. They put you in it. That was torture because I was the guy teasing them and then like, oh, see, that was karma for real, for real. Did they Voltron? Uh, like, do I got they come out. together? I got choked out by one, salute the fish, fish. But can they communicate with each other like whales do? Like, they use those kind of like sounds and shit? I don't know. Did you did you notice them having some sort of communication I do outside know, of English? No, I tell you one thing. I remember one time being in the class. I was in the trailer, and uh, the same dude, Peter Pan. I'm teasing him. Peter Pan is dead. <laughs> he, and we whisper it, yeah, yeah. and we just sitting there, and he go crazy. Yeah, so the yeah, teacher's yeah. like, "Yo, what's up, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's wrong with you?" And then he goes, "What's the problem?" They, they won't let me alone. And she goes, "Who?" And I didn't even know he knows my name. He goes, "Larry McAlvey, the big nose idiot." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know he was paying attention like that. And he said my whole name, Larry McKelvey, the big nose idiot. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so, so, I don't even know the fuck we, why we even talked about that. This time. What were we talking I about? think that was the, that's the way you stop school shootings. Oh, you bring the them class. back yeah. in the class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that is just trauma, bro. I think that when you see these guys that grab these guns and they go shoot up people, it's just hurt people hurting people, bro. Yeah, but maybe the autistic kids and the retards can handle more trauma than us weak, just normal folks. I don't believe that. I, I got choked out by a, a mentally retarded kid in right. high school. Yeah. I told y'all about that when I used to tease him every day and used to tease him at the Kingdom Hall with me. Yeah. And he never used to say a word. <laughs> yeah, he don't and care. And then one day I'll walk by and let one of those jokes fly and the next thing I know... Sleep a hole. Up. That's it. That's it. Sleep a hole. What was the, that? That that shit. What's that shit called? Uh, Satori. Out. So you got you felt that Satori. That, yeah, that breakthrough, that light. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I was almost dead till he let me go. Another dude named Fish. Fish grabbed me one day and just there was the fence around the track and it was like about five and a half feet tall, maybe six. He picked me up and put me on top of that fence. Yes. And just held me there for a while. Dude, that's and he it. just the the, the the fence shit was, was just sticking me just enough. He was just like. Pulling you down a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Little bit. Just letting me know I can pull you through this whole shit if I want Mortal to. Kombat style. Yeah. So they are they're aware. They're like elephants, bro. What do you mean? You ever see like the people there in Thailand, they're riding the elephants, and every once in a while some ch Instagram chick is taking a picture on an elephant, and every once in a while an elephant will let her know, hey, I'm letting you take this pic. Yeah. And he throws her off of him, right? That's them. They're like, hey, we're letting you be in our class. We're letting you make these jokes, but careful, because if I have to go full elephant, I can stampede your ass in a heartbeat. By the way, all jokes aside, yeah. where are they? Who? The mentally retarded kids. They're having the fucking time of their life, bro. Are That's they still in saying. school? Serious question. I'm not, I'm not even joking. I want to know. Get on SoundCloud. Let me know. Are they still in school? Because back in my day, it was the trailer, the short trailers in the back. Right. The short buses they used to be on. They used to eat lunch before everybody else. Does that still happen? I'm not sure. Chris, do you know where they are? No answers. Chris got know. no answers. Listen, we don't know. And, and anybody who's offended by this right now, you don't know. So shut the fuck up. Yes, we're Nobody not trying knows. to be offensive. We're having a conversation. We're trying to learn about these people and where they go in society. Who takes care of them? And by, yes, because by the way, when I was in school, they couldn't even get out of school until they were 21. Is that right? Yeah, they used to keep them in high school until they were 21 years old. I thought you were at 18. You're a legal adult. I don't know. Maybe that was a mis maybe that was a rumor. Mm. I thought they kept them until they were twenty one years old, mm. and then they let them. Then they let them out. They freed them. Yeah. Where are they? 
I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. I would sure. love to talk to somebody who is like a functioning member of society now, but in school, they were in the mentally retarded classes. class. Yes. You know what else they had back in the day? That I remember. I remember the EH classes. EH was emotionally handicapped, which I think is so interesting why it's so hard to get SEL in schools now, mm-hmm. social and emotional learning, when back in the day they had emotional. They would label people emotionally handicapped. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So clearly yeah. they had people in the schools that were trying to teach them to deal with their emotions. So why is it so hard to get SEL passed in schools now? I didn't know that it was hard to get it passed. Yeah, it is. Really? I, mean, I mean, they don't even really have it. So you're saying there's no program in the school. Well, it, we had what was called a guidance counselor. And if you were going through trouble at home or some shit. Trash. Really? No disrespect to the guidance counselors out there. Maybe y'all are better now. When I was in school, they did nothing. You know how I know they didn't do Why? nothing? I can't even remember none of my guidance counselors' names. And did they, they guide had, you, though? Did you have some clearly like, meetings not, with them? Clearly not. It had no impact on my life whatsoever. I, if you ask me any grade from elementary school to huh. middle school to high school, I can name different teachers, you know, even principals who had an impact on my life. Guidance counselors did nothing really? for me. Maybe you didn't need it. Maybe you were. Maybe you had good emotional health. Or maybe you um, were presenting as if you did, but you were compartmentalizing it and keeping it all in. No, back then I was very much so, I, I was a very much so a f- attention seeker. Right. And those people often don't go to the guidance counselor. Who goes to the guidance counselor are the people who are like quiet by themselves, no yeah. friends, they smell bad. Yeah. I think the guidance counselor is basically like, yo, is something fucked up happening at home? Do you want to talk about it? Yeah. Or do we have to make sure that you're eating? And like, at least back in where I was from, it was like, you got to have some emotional issues or there's like a language barrier. A lot of like kids who immigrated to 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 the states mm-hmm. and like they didn't really speak English that well. The guidance counselor would like make sure they're understanding what homework they had to do, et cetera. Yeah, I don't listen. No disrespect to the guidance counselor. I'm just saying I don't know what the fuck y'all do. Yeah. No, yeah, maybe y'all do something better now. Yeah. But back then, y'all ain't got me nowhere. Yeah, I think you know it was just I didn't get none to. of that counseling. Yeah. It was all discipline. It was paddling from the principal, ISS. You got hit? What? Dude, how old are you? Mr. Barnes. Mr. Barnett. Two of the most notorious paddlers ever in Berkeley High School history. Now, when they're hitting you from the back, right? I don't like how you said that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a Catholic school. <laughs> <laughs> I got your Jehovah's Witness right here. <laughs> so, when they're paddling you from the back, right? Do they ever catch your ball sack or do you pull that up? Nah, I didn't have big long. My, my balls have definitely started to hang more as I've gotten older. They weren't hanging like that back then. Really? No, 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 not at all. Every day was a cold day for me. Interesting. Yeah, they were tight, tight, close tight to the body. And then you would hold them up so that they wouldn't get caught with the paddle I didn't even at all. think about it. Now, when when you're getting hit with this paddle, right? Are you are you making sounds? Or are you trying to like thug it out? I can out? break down the whole Please strategy break it down. I'm fascinated okay. by this. Mr. Barnett uh-huh. was. No, Mr. Barnes was black. Okay. Uh, Mr. Barnes was black, but Mr. Barnes had a, a, a defective hand. Like his hand was nubby. So it was, one of his hands wasn't a fully formed hand. Mm. It was like a nub. And um, Would he put that on the children ever? No. Not that I remember, but he used to paddle with the other hand. Right. You know, and Mr. Barnett, big boss hog looking white man, like Dukes of Hazard, like... Right. Sturdy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Definitely was an Corn offensive fed, lineman. Yeah, yeah, man. Southern white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he had a big, thick paddle and he cut holes in it. What? So the air could go. Ooh. Oh, wow. wow. He had an aerodynamic paddle. So yeah. this motherfucker was a psychopath. He was yeah. strategic, He right? wanted it. He really wanted it. We quickly learned yeah. you don't want to get paddled by Mr. Barnett. So what do you do when you get in trouble? Please don't take me to Mr. Barnes. Please, whatever you do, don't take me to Mr. Barnes. Please don't take me to Mr. Barnes. Please, man, Mr. Barnes hits too hard. Please You're don't take me to Mr. Mr. Barnes. You're going to Mr. Barnes. Going to Mr. Barnes. Oh, you manipulated them <laughs> yes. into getting the paddling you yes. wanted. And Mr. Genius. Mr. Barnes paddle was so fucking Soft, weak. limp wrist. Oh, my bitch God. Bitch-ass Barnes, huh? Uh, I'm not calling him bitch-ass because I don't know if he's still alive. And I, don't, I still got to go to Mouse Corner. I don't know his family. You're right, you're but right. I don't know if he's a bitch-ass. But right, right. Mr. Barnett? I mean, he beat kids for a living, but sure. That was, this, that was discipline. Would his wrist be stronger because it's the only hand he could use? It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. I think he'd have a powerful wrist. It wasn't. Yeah. I'm telling you, Mr. No. Barnett was the guy. That's my wife. Mm. What's up, baby? I love how he picks up when his wife calls. All right. 
Mr. Barnett was the guy, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Mr. Barnes, Mr. Barnett was the guy that would hurt you. Mr. Barnes is the person with the light paddle. I don't even remember how we got on this subject. Okay, so you're saying you manipulate them in getting to Mr. Barnes to yes. paddle you because yes. you're trying to stay away from Mr. Barnett. Yes. You let him paddle you, paddle you with the limp wrist. Yes. Oh, we were talking about discipline because we didn't didn't have the guidance counselors. Yes. But yes, those were the two that used to discipline me. And we had a strategy. We would act like Mr. Barnes hurt so bad. So we would go to Mr. Barnes. And Mr. Barnett was actually the motherfucker that was bringing the, bringing the funk with that goddamn paddle. Really? Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. And you think on some level they enjoyed doing this disciplinary act? Hmm. If a man cuts holes in a paddle because he wants that paddle... He wants the air to go through that shit and hit you. Absolutely. And you got to think about how we are as adults, mm. right? You don't think they sat around and had a couple beers and laughed at people that would, yo, we had, yo, I've seen Mr. Barnett hit people like literally be on this side of the room and guys would jump across the desk. You know what I'm saying? He like would do literally it in front of other students. That was the torture. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> the torture was sitting there waiting like, holy shit. You know what I'm saying? And you had to try to put the strategy with that too. Do you want to be first? <laughs> when he, you want to be when he's tired. Yeah, you, you want to be you when he's if tired. It's, if it's three or four of us in there, I want to be fucking fourth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there had to be a strategy somewhere in that shit, right? And then it was, you get three paddles or one, depending on. on the offense. So, oh, okay, this is crazy. So, so that if, one might be the whammy. So you're like, I'd rather the three... Because he's going to make it... You don't know. He's going to divide that power yeah. into thirds. Yeah, you, you, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a it's a tough thing to deal with, bro. I, I think about that now, and I think about the trauma that shit caused, bro. I used to see some fucked up shit when I was a kid. Like even I had a teacher named Miss Freeman, fourth grade. Uh -huh. She used to fuck us up in class. Like, literally fuck us up. Like, she would grab kids, drag them across their desk, like, shake kids. Like, she was an abusive-ass motherfucking teacher. And I don't think none of us knew any better. I really don't. Would your parents be okay if they knew that there was a teacher beating I, I, you? I don't think so. And I've seen her do some foul shit. I remember it was How would uh, you react? We just used to watch. It was like, almost like a, it was almost like one of those things like you just keep your head down. No, how would you react Today. if you found out that there was a teacher doing this to one of your daughters? I'm going to do that to the teacher. And if uh, it's a woman teacher, my wife going to handle that. <laughs> They're going to she you going to get fucked up and you going to jail. <laughs> Isn't I that crazy? I have, no, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Okay. Like, it's certain things that I have no problem going to jail over. It's certain things I have no problem losing some shit over. That's one of them. So let. So this is an interesting discussion. There was a time in our lives mm -hmm. where beating someone else's kid was not only acceptable, was considered the right thing to do. It was part of, I don't know if you would call it a curriculum, but it was definitely, a th it was a part of the school. It was the disciplinary act in school. Boom, there right? you go. That's the okay. word for it. We've gone past that, right? We've, we've, we've realized that there is an error in our ways and that's not what you're supposed to do to kids, right? Sure. We acknowledge that at the time it was okay. Yeah. And at the time it was the thing to do, parents would go in and be like, oh, I'm sorry my kid was such a pain in the ass. I'm sorry you had to beat them. That was back in the day when they they, that, they really took that it takes a village shit serious. What, right? So, But what's interesting is now we realize it's bad. Are we going to go back and cancel Mr. Barnes and Mr. Barnett and Mrs. Fields? Like, do we go Ms. back? Ms. Freeman should have been canceled. Because, because hers, it wasn't in context. Mr. Barnes, Mr. Barnett, it was in context. Okay. You, you, you get in trouble. Okay. Go to their office. You get a paddling. You know what I'm saying? And if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. I think the parents had to actually sign something that says it's okay for you to paddle my kids. Ms. Freeman, the shit she was doing in class, no way. And when, when I think about that shit now, and I would, anybody who had Ms. Freeman, uh, Whitesville Elementary School, fourth grade teacher, I would love to know if y'all remember her fucking kids up. I would love to know that. If you you went remember. to Whitesville Elementary Whitesville School? Whitesville Elementary School. And after that, did you go to Mayonnaise Middle School? <laughs> and Hellman's High School? <laughs> Whitesville <laughs> Elementary School. Gil Yard Road, baby. So I guess what I'm trying to say is we acknowledge that behavior changes over time. Why mm -hmm. is it so fucking difficult for that to be acknowledged on Twitter? Like, there. I mean... Yes. Boom. I, I just I don't understand that. it. Like, I don't understand that either, bro. And all of us, like, all of us had parents that were hit at school. My parents were hit at school. You you were probably hit at school. I was definitely not hit at school. No? Parents, though? 100%. 100%. So it's like, we know that this shit changes, and here's what's even crazier. 
It changes at a different pace in different places. In New York or Philadelphia, they said, hey, stop beating kids at school way earlier than in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. You know what, man? I agree with you, and I wonder this. Has culture really shifted? Or there's a new culture called social media that makes us think everything has shifted. Meaning like... I think I know where you're going. Meaning like... We we know this, we have conversations all the time amongst yeah. each other. And yeah, we use certain language and certain words, and Ooh, we laugh and this we is joke. Great. Go on, and go it's on, never go a on, problem go. until we motherfucking <laughs> present it to somebody else, and then somebody else says, "Oh, that's wrong. That's fucked up. You don't. We don't do that no more." I remember vividly when we was doing Uncommon Sense, and I tweeted out something about the word female. I was just like, "Yo, you females, such and such." It wasn't nothing derogatory. It was just like it was literally like, "Yo, females." Look good. Some, I don't know Female? what it was. We're not an animal species. Yes. And I had <laughs> never heard that shit in my life. I thought I was being trolled. Yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, I literally thought I was being trolled until you start having conversations. Like, no, you're not supposed to call women females. I'm like, since fucking when? Yeah. Like, we just stopped calling y'all bitches. Yeah, except we, female. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty fucking good. <laughs> like, and I understand why you don't want to be called bitches. I understand why you don't want to be called whores. I don't understand why you want to be called but female. Those are the slur- but female, the word that is actually in science books? We've been checking male or female on all on these the little census yes. for years. How the hell do you think we thought about words? What the? F- that shit. But that's what I'm talking about. No, no. Shit like you're that. On it. You're, what, what you're trying to say is Twitter has created a completely separate culture than the one that we exist in. Or social media has created a separate culture than we exist in. Twitter and social media is kind of like the workplace. You know when you're at work in a corporate setting? There's certain rules. There's certain rules. Absolutely. But we understand that those rules exist only at work because we assume that you don't have a camaraderie with some of these people and we just need to make sure everybody's comfortable. So we're going to heighten the rules just to make sure everyone's secure. And we're going to make people act abnormal. How you act at work is not normal. It is abnormal. Hello. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nobody goes, I feel my most comfortable and my most self at work. Right. Right. So Twitter now has the same rules as work, which we acknowledge is abnormal. Nobody gets around their friend group and continues to act like they do on Twitter or at work. The second that you get out of work, you're like, fuck, glad that shit's done. What's up, dog? Fuck you. You're a dickhead. Suck my dick. Da, 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 da. Right? I guess what I'm trying to say is we're canceling people for standards that we do not keep in our life. Yes. At all. And we know we don't keep it. Justin Trudeau out there canceling people for shit that he's done. Yeah. All these Twitter woke people that you and I know that are super woke on social media and in real life, not keeping the same energy. And, that's, and by the way, in that shit, like Ryan Holiday is going to talk about this later. Um, Well, maybe, no, he didn't. I talked about that with him earlier. But I had a conversation with him and he was talking about how, like, the, oh, no, we did talk about it, how you present one way, mm. but you're really living another way. Mm. So you can never truly have peace. You can never truly have stillness. And I've been saying this for years before I even met Ryan Holiday. Eventually, that other way. It's going to catch up. It, it, now it's going to catch up. It's going to take over every fucking thing. Mm. It's going to take it all over. See that with Bill Cosby. You know mm. what I'm saying? You see that with an R. Kelly. You see that with an Harvey Weinstein. Whatever you were doing in the motherfucking dark that was foul, it don't matter how you present. Mm. That shit is going to catch up to you and it's going to overcome you. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So so, so at what point in time do we start going, at what point in time do we start giving some pushback? At what point in time do we start going, yo? I don't think we should push back. Okay, okay. Okay, go on that. I think it's... But you, what I mean by pushback is like... um. Push back to this like fake regulations of how we should act that Twitter is imposed on us. Back. I think okay. I, don't, I don't think we should care. Ah, so don't I'm give it any oxygen. I don't think we should care. I don't think that's what uh I don't think that's what giving your real opinion is about. You know what I'm saying? I think that if you um like matter of fact, there's this quote, uh okay, yeah, Satori, right? No, that's not Satori. Yeah. By focusing on what's obvious or by sticking with the first thought that pops into your head, right? So, you know, when you get to Satori, you're not focusing on what's obvious anymore. You're not sticking with the first thought that is in your head. So if you've actually thought about something, if you've given something some real thought, right, and you actually have an opinion that can, I don't know, make somebody else look at the situation a different way or somebody can learn from it, 
Give us that. Mm. But if you're just giving us your first bullshit thought, your first bullshit observation, even when you're outraged, right? Because mm. what you just talked about, you just talked about people feeling like they should be outraged at something. So you see a word and your first thought is, oh, that's wrong. You haven't even given it any thought. Someone to see told it. you to feel that way. Yeah. Does it really bother you? Have you given it some thought to see? To How make could it, you call me it female? Bother you? Exactly. Who told you Who that told that's you offensive? That? You didn't think of that yourself because every time you checked off the sentence, you weren't upset. Absolutely. You didn't return the sentence to the, the United Absolutely. States government and go, I'm not a dog. I did something yesterday, man, with a, with a group of people. And it was actually very fun. But in the midst of it, mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, this whole shit is profiling. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, this whole shit is profiling. I'm getting excited. But in the context of what we were doing, and I was saying this, and as I'm saying this, people are laughing, the audience is laughing, we're all laughing, then it became a running joke, because yeah. that's all it is. What was it? Can I you can't talk about say. it? Okay. I'll tell you after the fact. <laughs> but it was, in context, yes. it wasn't bad. And when you're actually, when you're actually playing this thing, right, you're playing this game and you're like, realizing like, yo, some of the, some of the profiling is accurate, <laughs> but then some of the profiling is totally off. So you can see how mistakes can happen yes. and you can see how, uh, she, she can, mistakes can be prevented. Meaning like if I see this person and he looks like he may be a school shooter based off what I think school shooters look like. Right. White guy, tall, scraggly little mustache, long black trench coat. That's a school shooter. Are you describing what I'm wearing today? Um, you and you and a little mix of you and Columbine. Okay. But that's the school shooter. You know what I'm saying? But what if he's not? Right. What if he's just a fucking tall guy with a scraggly mustache and a long coat? You know what I'm saying? He's not bothering nobody. But you might actually profile him and pat him down and he really may have a gun on him so he may be right so e it could go either way is what I'm saying yes. but you gotta throw something up against the wall to see if it motherfucking sticks cause we all do it that's all a cop's job is to profile by the way 100% so we're asking them to be perfect at profiling yeah. and it's hard you to can't be walk perfect through, you can't, you can't walk through an airport and have signs that say if you see something say something cause the way I see things it might gonna be, be a different, different than the other person yeah yeah you're gonna see a lot there's gonna be a lot of saying I think Taylor looks suspicious as fuck About but I know her Right. You know what I'm saying? But it, you, excuse me, if you didn't know her. Oh, yeah. You would profile her. Oh, yeah. What would you think that she was doing? I'd just be, who is this little short, like, you know, tiny hand person? <laughs> just mean mugging. Mean mugging. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Like, they're up to something. Yeah, no, you're plotting. She's yeah, plotting. She's yeah. up to something. She's got, a, she's got a hustle going. She's up she's to something. She's got a hustle going, and she needs to be watched. Yeah, that's, that's all I'm saying. All point hey, time. by the way, that's all yeah. it takes some time, right? Watch her. Watch her. You don't gotta arrest her. Don't bother her. Just, just this. Watch. That's, that's it. it. That's Listen, it. Right here. That's Keep it. an eye. That's it. Keep an eye. Observation. That's all it is. That's it. Okay. I mean, listen, I'm not against you. I think I I I rather agree. I think we have like a natural function on our brains that profiles. Like, how often do we do this with chicks? Ah, uh, she's prude. Nah, she's down. She's bad. Yo, I bet she gives great head. This. We do it all the time. Now we're not doing it strictly on their race. But we're doing it based on maybe the way <laughs> <laughs> Alex just Alex woke up. up. <laughs> <laughs> That's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> maybe some races give head better than others. It's no, a possibility. Listen, the beauty about the world we live in right now, everybody's profiling each other. Yeah, yeah, we we want to be profiled. Yeah. Like when you buy a watch that's worth $10,000, you are asking people to profile I you. do that all the time. Buy watches for $10,000? No, 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 no. I, I look at people's watches. Oh, because you own a watch. Yeah, I just, I just like, when I when I see, I don't, I'm not going to say when I see it, I think to myself, I, he's somebody. That's it, dude. I, but I do, when I see a certain watch, especially, I, can, I know how much it costs to say, all right, I wonder what he does. I wonder what I she does. A hundred percent. You know on, what I'm saying? You, on, that's yes. what it is. I'm not gonna say it's there's somebody. I just you wonder what they how do. They paid for it. There you go. But that's what yeah. we want people to be asking, yeah. right? Like when we wear a twenty thousand dollar watch, we want people. When we wear super expensive sneakers or really exclusive sneakers, we want that question to be asked. That's the funniest thing to me about like uh, like gangster rappers getting involved in like the the police brutality thing. It's like for how many albums are you gonna put out where you're like, yo, we're dangerous, we're menacing. And then you're going to go out and be like, why do the police think we're dangerous and menacing? I mean, not only that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, I mean, it's not, like not, we not, think you're dangerous and menacing because you fucking sing about it well, all not, the time. Not, That's not, why. And not only that, you know, you say, you, on top of that, you say fuck the police. <laughs> you say fuck the police.
the phone. And they might, they might, they take that away. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I guess what I'm saying is, we ask to be profiled just as much as we profile, hundred percent. Right, we bring think, it on ourselves. That's why we get so mad at. I mean, at least, at least from I can only speak from a black perspective. That's why we get so mad at other black people when they do fucked up shit. Because you're like, we already go through it enough. Absolutely, white and, people. It's so many white people that they don't. They they you can't marginalize them. Right, you know what I'm saying? Like you might can marginalize them by region. You know, if you're in a certain city. You might know something that Canadians, I don't say use Canada, but you might know something that people in Arkansas do. Oh, yeah, we judge people in, people in different do. places. Yeah. yeah. The South judges Northern Yankees. And, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think uh, 100%. I wonder if girls, Taylor, do you, is there a way to dress single? <laughs> so so there's no way Taylor where. Taylor definitely like, looks single right now. <laughs> there's no now, way where. I don't where, know if you did that on purpose. You're done. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> is, there, is there any way that, like, Let's say you're out and you want to be approached. Not saying you dress like a hoe, but like, is there a way where you're like, I would like a guy's attention tonight. And it doesn't mean that it has to have your boobs out. You know what I'm saying? I was talking about this with my friend, actually. Like, I would say for females in a way, I might get killed for this, but whatever. Like, certain regions of where you're in the city, like, you could tell a hood girl from... Like someone that's kind of has a lot of other stuff going on. Does that make sense? Like a bougie girl from a hood girl. Yeah. Most bougie girls are nothing but, but hood girls but, but who got a good thing. job. I'm just saying though, like wait, what? Most bougie girls are just are girls from the hood who just got a good job, and now they think they're not hood no more. But they still ghetto as fuck. Yeah, they. Which is sexy. But I don't know. Like they'll if I go in the hood, especially in New York, like. You tell don't nobody think you bougie. I'm not saying me me being bougie, but you could kind of tell like, oh, she like in the trenches. Yeah, because you got on camouflage. No, stop. <laughs> <laughs> you look She's like you're wearing a camouflage walls. jacket. And stuff, how they do their hair, maybe, and everything else. You're saying that you can you can discern if if a girl is ghetto or not based on the way she looks. But so how, more so how she dresses. How, how she dresses. Not looks physically, but how she carries herself. I Just, think white ghetto looks yeah. worse than black ghetto nowadays. I think white ghetto is like, what's the rap? What's that chick that used to rap? You know what I'm talking about. That was on uh, Dr. Phil. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Leezy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like, cause, you know, because to me. No, not they, Bad Bunny. The other one. Uh, Cash Me Outside. There you go. No, that is Bad Bunny. Yeah, that's, that's No, it's not no, Bad, Bad Bunny. No, Bad Bunny's a, a Puerto Rican. Bad Baby. Bad ba yeah, something. Whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All Barbie. I'm simply saying is, the bad Barbie. She's, ge she's ghetto. Yeah. She you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like, like, like she's old school. What people thought being ghetto was. Yes. Ghetto people don't act like that. So she wears ghetto. Like face. real people from the hood and the yeah. ghetto don't act like that. She, yeah, she wears ghetto face. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she's yeah. ghetto because she's she, pretending. She's acting the way she thinks black people in the hood act. Yeah. That's ghetto to me. So she's playing the character. She's playing Absolutely. this ghetto character. Absolutely. Now, wait, before I even leave, like, but back to I single. Don't say though. <laughs> How do we find if girls are single by the way that they dress? They're, you don't dress any differently when you're in a relationship or not? No, I don't. Really? Because I don't. I feel like. You're going to get the attention regardless. Yeah, pretty much. Interesting. No, that's fine. <laughs> if you're going to get it no matter what, why put in the effort? I notice I you only get it when not... you stand up. <laughs> what? I noticed you only get it when you stand up. Not stand you're not going to get one compliment today because you're sitting down. Now watch. When you go on the side, watch today when we put this up. Yeah. Nobody's going to say anything. As soon as you stand up, they're going to be... They're not going to say anything because of you because what you're saying. It's the truth. Yeah, what do they say about it? Go back and watch old comments. They only like when they can see Taylor standing all the way up. But what do they say? That you built like, like Toastal? They, boom. Say? That's all I'm saying. What are, saying. what are you trying to say about my face? Oh, let's pay some bills. <laughs> I think this is a good time to segue into GOAT. <laughs> right? Okay. All right, hold that thought one second. We got some bills to pay because Amazon Intersect Festival is coming. Announcing Intersect Festival presented by Amazon Web Services, where music, art, and technology converge, taking place December 6th and 7th at the Las Vegas Festival grounds, right on the Vegas Strip. Born out of the massive after party 
for their reInvent conference and open to the public for the first time ever. Intersect offers an aspiring journey to culture and technology's cutting edge, featuring Foo Fighters, Anderson Pack, Casey Musgraves, Beck, Flying Lotus, Leon Bridges, Her, Spoon, Jamie XX, Thundercat, Churches, Brandy, Carlisle, and many more to be announced. Intersect isn't just a music festival. In addition to a diverse lineup of more than 30 music acts, this immersive experience features cutting-edge digital art and interactive experiences like a post-apocalyptic dodgeball stadium, a video arcade, and more. Sounds dope. And includes cuisine from acclaimed chefs and Vegas's best eateries. For a limited time, Brilliant Idiots listeners can save $10 on a two-day general admission ticket to Intersect by going to intersectfest.com and using the promo code IDIOTS at checkout. That's intersectfest.com and promo code IDIOTS to save some cash and be a part of this incredible experience. All right, let's get back to the show. Oh, uh, real quick. Um, I meant to give these church announcements earlier on in the episode, but I forgot. But uh, next show coming up, we are in uh, West Palm Beach at the Palm Beach Improv. I'll be there October 26th, one night only. Make sure you get that. Then we're out in Sacramento uh, in Chico. I think the uh, uh, 11-1, November 1st, Chico, California, Sacramento. The second is sold out. The third early show is sold out. The four, We added a fourth show on the third. Get those tickets quick before that one goes. Uh, uh, and then we're back on the East Coast. We've got uh, Connecticut, the 14th, Boston, the 16th. Early show sold out at the Wilbur. We've added a late show at the Wilbur. Those ticks are going quick, so get those. And then New York, the 22nd, Town Hall. First show sold out. Second show is almost sold out. Go to theandrewschultz.com. Get those tickets. I'm very excited for that Town Hall show, man. Very excited. So get that. And then more shows added, uh, theandrewschultz.com. I'll be in your city, so go check. Let's get back to the show. Uh, Yeezy. These Jordans off whites. If you're buying sneakers for a few hundred dollars online, how can you be sure they're the real thing? All right, Goat.com is the safest safest way to buy and sell authentic sneakers online. They're the largest marketplace in the world for authentic Yeezys, Jordans, and over six hundred thousand sneaker listings. Okay, they've made the whole process frictionless and trustworthy. Uh, you fuck with Goat Shorts? Yeah, of course I fuck with Goat, man. That's where you got to get the shit. What's the last thing you got from Goat? Um, these actually right here. What are those? Let me see. <clears throat> Ooh. I don't even remember the name of them, but there's some Air Force Ones. Okay. But they okay, got they some- from China or somewhere. Yeah, they got the- I saw them when I was in Japan, but they didn't have my size because they don't make uh, Japanese fucking shoes my size. They mm-hmm. stopped making Japanese shoes at 12. What's your size? 13, bro. Hey! <laughs> you know what I mean? It's what it is. It's what it is. <laughs> Listen, you can find the perfect 100% authentic sneaker at GOAT.com slash idiots. That's GOAT.com slash idiots. Plus, you'll also be supporting our show, The Brilliant Idiots, right? But you got to go do it right now before the sneakers you want are gone. When you go to GOAT.com slash idiots, GOAT.com slash idiots. You want to throw out some hey, hymns real quick? You know Shopsy? what? That hairline, is it slowly starting to move backwards? Is that what's happened to you? Best way to prevent hair loss is do something about it while you still have some. Forhims.com, one stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men. The active ingredient in, in Hims, uh, finasteride I, or Propecia, I've been taking for years. As you can see, I have a beautiful full head of hair on me and I got in there quick. I got in there when I thought it was first starting to go. This is like maybe two or three years into my comedy career. I was like, I'm not supposed to be bald. I got to do something about this. So I got me some hymns, basically the same ingredient that's in hymns. And and to be honest, hymns is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA approved products to help treat hair loss. No snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. Just a few quick questions and a doctor will review and then they'll take care of it. Um, it's fascinating. The way that they found out this shit worked is, um, it was a drug that they were using for like, people had some kind of like liver thing. I forget something else. It was a, it was a side effect. Cirrhosis? No, 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 no. It wasn't that. I forget exactly what it was. Maybe it wasn't even liver, but there was basically like 10 patients and they were all in there and they were taking this drug as a, like, um, potential cure for this. I think it was liver, maybe it was stomach, something like that. And then all of a sudden, all the patients started growing hair back. Mm. And they're like, wait, what the fuck is going on? And then they accidentally realized that uh, finasteride could reverse uh, balding. 
So wow. yeah, they immediately tried to get the FDA approval. They get it, and all of a sudden, it is on. So basically, go order it right now. Our listeners can get started with uh, uh, the Hims Complete Hair Kit for just five dollars today, while supplies last and subject to doctor's approval. See the website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds of dollars when the doctor or pharmacy is prescribing to you. So instead, just get it prescribed by fourhims.com. F O R H I M S dot com slash B I fourhims dot com slash B I. That's right. Hey, listen, I want to salute the Variety magazine. Um, oh, congrats on that. I saw you post that. Yeah, they came out with their uh, two, 2019 New Power of New York list. Okay. And um, they got they got me on there. And um, my man Craig Melvin is on there. Jesus and Mero is on there. Janet Mock is on there. There's a lot of different people on there. But I, I really, you know, it's so interesting, man, when things like that happen. Like, it, I just... You know, take it with a grain of salt because, like, my father always said, you're never as good as they say you are. You're never mm-hmm. as bad as they say you are. So it's just like, you know, one moment you'll have a bunch of motherfuckers saying, fuck you, yada, yada, yada. Next moment you're on some, you know, power list. Do you really care about that list? Like, does that um, validate your power? No, it doesn't validate it at all. But it's good to be acknowledged. It is. It's good to be acknowledged. Yeah, it you know is what I'm good. It, it does feel good to be acknowledged. But I don't feel like I'm doing anything this year that I haven't been doing forever. Yeah, like I think I feel you, like y'all. I feel like yeah. I feel like when I see stuff like that, it's like okay, y'all finally finally you figured it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I completely feel that way. I, I saw you post it, and I was looking through it, and and I feel like we live in this completely different time where maybe back in the day we were hoping to achieve the Grammy or hoping to achieve the Oscar, mm-hmm. hoping to get added to these lists, and now since we have the numbers right in front of ourselves and we know our influence. Like, you know exactly where you rank on the power rankings in New York. And I'm sure you looked at some people on that list and you're like, they ain't that powerful. I, I, that's not for me to say. You know what I'm saying? Just because just, just I don't know. <laughs> no, seriously. Cause just because just I don't know somebody doesn't mean that they're not powerful. I, I just, in I their just, field. Yeah, sure, I just sure, may sure, not sure, know. Sure, sure. What I was more impressed by, I love the fact that Deez and Merrill was on there. And I love the fact that Craig Melvin was on there because Craig Melvin is from where I'm from. He's from mm. South Carolina. Yeah. Me and Craig used to do... Who is he? I don't know him. He's a, he's a, he's a news anchor. Craig's on uh, MSNBC. I think yeah. he fills in on to the day show a lot. Like Everybody's like, oh, he's going to be the next Matt Lauer without the freak shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like He's just good at what he does. But Craig, me and Craig... Uh, we came up together in Columbia. And I remember back in 2004, the state newspaper in Columbia, they did a top 10 under the, under the age of 30 in the arts in South Carolina. And they, they, they did these profiles on these 10 people. And you guys were both in it? Me and Craig were both ah, in it. You know what I'm saying? Good. Craig was in there with puppies licking on his fucking face, laying in the grass. Because literally, that's this. Who he's always been this guy. Yes. Like, he's not a person that's presenting one way and acting another way. Right. Craig has always been... Straight, down the middle, good guy. Just that's him, really. Yes. I, like, we used to be, be in the club sometime, you know. Oh my God, I'd be throwing birthday parties. He'd come to my parties at V12, and like he'd literally be sitting, he'd be like, Oh my God, is, is that marijuana? I'm out of here. You gotta get out of here. Like, <laughs> like seriously. And he would, we would go somewhere else. Because he knew how good he was gonna be. Absolutely. He knew where he was going. Absolutely. So it was, it's interesting to see things come full circle for us to be under the age of 30 in Columbia, South Carolina, just trying to figure it out yeah. to now being recognized by Variety as two of two, uh, the most powerful in New York and neither one of us even fucking from here. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I, I, was, I was like, damn, that's what's up like for, for Craig. And did, yeah. these and Merrill, the same thing. Like, yo, that's Uncommon Sense alumni. That's, yeah. That's two guys that my man Paul Ritchie was telling me about one day in the office and we went down a deep rabbit hole of these Zamero shit. Like, yo, let's go get these Zamero. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. Like, these Zamero come in, then MTV don't know what to do with them, but they just spraying graffiti all over the motherfucking wall and writing. And yeah. It's like, yo, I'm a, we developed this show called Common Sense. Let's use my guys every week, classic of trash. And it's just like, it's just dope to see them recognized in that way. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. So like, for me, it wasn't even really about me. It's like, that's dope that all of us are on this list. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I it, I got history with these people in a real way. And it makes you think about, like, the industry. And I wrote about this in my last book about how sometimes, man, you can't help but to become a part of the industry because you become the industry. You know yes. what I'm saying? It's not like we forcing it. Like, these are people that I... We, I actually came up with. Like, somebody might see me right now with Craig Melvin and be like, man, Charlamagne done got so industry, industry the fuck out. Bro, me and Craig Melvin known each other for... Damn it, 20 years. Yes, but I like, don't think literally. they... 
I don't think that that makes you necessarily industry. I think there's a negative connotation to industry. Um, I do too. But at the same I time, see why I don't. yeah, I think it, they've earned it in a lot of ways. You know, like mm-hmm. there could be a negative connotation to to you know certain news reporting, but a lot of times it can be earned as well. Um, but I think that it doesn't mean that you're necessarily industry. I think you become industry when your opinions are that of the industry. Boom. Absolutely. And as long as your opinions are that of yours, then you're good. You can operate within it or the, with or the, outside of it. You're absolutely right, but the audience will never see it that way. That's fair, but it's and, not and you know why the audi- see. Yeah, you know why the audience will never see it that way? Because you may grow, you may evolve. Right. You may not want to approach things the same way that you did. You might have different opinions than you once did. Your mind might have changed. You know what I'm saying? And people will be like, oh, you you PC. You PC to God or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. Like, it's like, nah, that's just really how I feel in this moment. Right. You know what I'm saying? Everything don't deserve my attention. Right. Everything don't deserve my energy. Right. Everything don't deserve my motherfucking opinion. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, this shit bugs me out when I see people on social media and it's like, everybody's talking. By the way, if I see everybody talking about the same exact thing, I'm not going to get involved. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why? When I got a podcast, mm-hmm. when I got a radio show, like I don't feel the need. I don't, I don't have to jump on social media and post something about whatever the fuck it is y'all talking about when I can come on here and really, really get talk about it. it. Yeah. And, and give it a few days. You know what I'm saying? Give it a day or two to really digest my Marinate, thoughts. Really Make sure my it, yeah. thoughts are mine and not some fucking talking points I'm echoing because I saw them on fucking Instagram. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It, Twitter's a really useless place for opinions, to be honest with you. Let's let's run through some of Taylor's I, topics. I really, I really... Oh, I got a hot take. Say what? what What's Am- that? Amber Geiger. What? What is that? Amber Dallas. Geiger, uh, the ex-cop in Dallas who was sentenced to 10 years in prison for the murder of uh, Botham, Botham John. Oh, yeah. And then, and then her family members have been hugging her and his family members are hugging her and stuff like that. Yeah. That's what you think. I think that um, I think that it's not up to me to tell them how to like get past something like this. Mm-hmm. And if that is the way that they do it and that gives them some comfort, I sure as hell am not going to be the one to criticize them about it because at the end of the day, they got to deal with the fact that their loved one is gone. Yeah. So if your coping mechanism is forgiveness and that empowers you to continue moving on with your life, because I know how dark a place I would be if my brother got shot and killed. Yeah, yeah. And I'd probably be looking for any way to get the fuck out of there, you know? So it's like... I don't think that works, I can't bro. judge them. That, that's fair. And if it don't work, they'll learn that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just not going to be the one to jump uh, and just go, what would you do to that? That's stupid. It's like, you don't know what's yeah, going to help you in that you're moment. Right. I think that is some shit. The same way we talk about people tell you what to be outraged about, I think that's the way people tell you to get over shit. People say that shit because it sounds good. Sure. Oh, you got to forgive the person. Sure. If you forgive them, then, you know, you're freeing yourself sure. of the hate and yada, yada. I don't believe that because yeah. emotions are waves, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You might do that in the moment and it makes you feel better. You might wake up that next morning and be like, man, fuck why that motherfucker killed my people. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. So yeah, that's not forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't I don't know. But, by, but you're right. I can't tell them how to get over something. Right. But I will say, I don't give a fuck what nobody say. What I saw with that judge, yeah, what yeah, I saw yeah, with that bailiff, yeah. that was some straight Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, yeah. Massa, we sick. Massa, we going to Massa, we going to jail for ten years. Bullshit. Will you tell me when have you ever seen a judge come off a bench and hug somebody they just sentenced? Hmm. When? And give him a Bible. That's why she's being investigated now. Because there's no way that shit is fucking ethical. And and I don't know if it's I don't know if it's illegal. But I would think that if I'm a judge on the stand, mm-hmm. right, and at the end of the, 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 the sentence thing, I give them a hug and a Bible. You were biased. So how do we know you really gave this person what they deserve to get? Well, she doesn't decide, right? The jury decides. She gave the sentence. She gave a sentence, don't the, she? The jury the jury decided guilt. guilty. Guilty, yeah. And so she, and she jury decides right. guilt. Right. Judge gives the sentence. Right. How do we know that the judge giving her 10 years was actually what she was supposed to get? You think that she should have gotten more years potentially? For murder? Yeah. Right. You walk in somebody's fucking house and they just minding their business, eating ice cream, and you shoot them. Right. And and and, again, and the fact that the judge was saying that to we we uh you, we could consider castle doctrine. Now I'm not the highest grade of weed in the dispensary. I'm not gonna sit there and try to act like an attorney. But last time I checked, castle doctrine applies to the homeowner, not the intruder. So how the fuck can the intruder 
get castle doctrine I, in I somebody else's house. I don't know enough about the story. I didn't follow it that much. The only thing I know is that uh, she, her argument was she thought she was walking into her apartment and they live in the same building, right? I've done that. I'm, 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 just you, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you, Taylor. No, no, no. You can, but just let me get she out. Thought, what I'm she thought to she walked, in, walked into the wrong so, apartment. So I've been, I've been in situations where I was, this has happened to me in Australia. I thought that I was on the third floor of the hotel. I was actually on the fifth floor. I've gone to my girl's house and I pushed the wrong button on, I, I thought it was the 11th floor, not the 13th floor or whatever the fuck it was. And I've gone and tried to open the door. I've knocked on the door. I've tried to figure out why the fuck. I go. I've in my, this is crazy. In my own apartment building. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to say what floor I live on, but I went to a different floor and the door was open and I walked right in to that apartment. That was my exact uh, uh, line of apartment, but it was on a different floor. And I walked right into the apartment and I'm looking around. I'm like, it's dark. It, okay. Wait for it. It's dark. It's the same setup as mine because structurally all the apartments look the same. It's the exact same setup. And I'm looking around. It's dark. So I can't really see anything. But I'm like, why the fuck did I leave my door open? I didn't leave it open. And I walk in and I look at the thing and I realize it's not my apartment letter. And I'm like, oh, shit, I go out. All I'm saying is I can believe walking into the wrong apartment easily because I've done it. Yeah, but pulling but a gun out and shooting somebody, that's a totally different go. situation. Exactly. That's why I said she's lying. First of all, in the story, she was sexting someone that was married or something like that. And what that, does that, that have anything? to do with it? I'm just saying that's she's saying like she that's how she got confused. She walked into the wrong apartment. How I look at it is like you said, why you're thinking to yourself, why is my door? Um, Open. Do I write that? It's not the same interior design. Nothing like. Why would you just? shoot It takes him? a lot to pull out a gun. Exactly. Stand over somebody I, and shoot him. And I, they and they said the way the bullet hit the guy, clearly somebody was standing over him. So at some point, and him saying, "Yo, what the fuck? You in the wrong apartment? Whatever, whatever." You had enough time to be like, "Oh shit." But you're <laughs> you know also looking for something though. You could tell you go in someone's apartment wherever he was sitting at. Was he on the sofa or something like that? Yes. Okay. You can tell it's not your apartment, though. Like, Listen, I'm, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm over that. I'm over that part of the situation. What bothers me the most she of lied. this whole case is watching them hug her in the courtroom yeah. as if she was a fucking victim. Yeah, Ain't that much forgiveness in the world. The father, the father saying, hey, I want to be friends with you. Bro, that is some fucking, that is some slave Stockholm Syndrome but shit, bro. I, I guess neither I of us. I want to be friends with you, Schultz. Neither of us were in the... Neither of us were in the courtroom, right? Realistically, nobody in this room right now knows anything about that case. Let's be honest. All we know about the case is what we're told to know, which was these people are forgiving the woman that killed their son and brother. And we look at that as a sign of weakness. So that's all, that's is all we one know. thing. It, right. But the hugs. I, yo, the father said, I want to be your friend. How the fuck? You want to invite the person that killed your son over for dinner? I, you know, I, I don't. I don't think nah. I could do it. I, I don't think I could do it. Nah. Again, I don't know how I would cope with a crazy situation like that. That's the fucked maybe, up maybe, things. Maybe, maybe it's world. people. By the way, once again, you know how we talk about Twitter and we yeah. talk about people making you feel like you got to feel a certain way. Yeah. Maybe they're not allowing themselves to feel. Maybe they're not allowing themselves to really go through their emotions. Maybe yeah. they're not allowing themselves to grieve. They're stifling it with forgiveness. They don't maybe. even know. Yeah, they don't know. They don't even know what they truly feel. They just they're reading all the Bible scriptures. And they're reading the affirmations sure. and they're reading to the positive quotes. And they're just like, okay, maybe if we just be positive, the sadness will go away. It won't. So yeah, no, it that, won't. You're 100. percent That is not bringing that man back. 100 percent be the case. I I don't know. I'm not exactly sure about it. I just I just know I don't know enough about the case. And if you're a fucking grieving person, I don't know how to tell you how to deal with that. I can't tell you how to grieve. And I'm not, I, by the way, this has, this really has nothing to do with the family, even though it's like, damn, I'm looking at the family like, wow. You know, but. You don't think they were trying to get some pussy? Man, shut up, man. This so you don't stupid. think a little bit. That, <laughs> you don't think a little bit that. that She's hey, going to jail. Why would she. White women will always be black men's kryptonite in some I'm places. I'm just saying they looking at her in on some trial. places. She's coming in all done up. You know what I mean? She got her hair places. ready. You know what I mean? She, they've been watching the trial for a few weeks or however long it is. Listen. Mind you, this happened last year, though, right? Does it? All last I'm year. saying is that he knows she's going away for a while. She's going to want a little something right before. I think white women crying makes everybody uncomfortable. <laughs> 
Say again? I think white women crying makes everybody uncomfortable. Makes me I think France. Exactly. That's why I say I don't think nobody's comfortable Son. when they see a white woman crying. No. When you see a white woman crying, you feel like you about to get in trouble. Exactly. I forgive you. I forgive you. Yes, I'm Stop sorry. Passe. I'm, Stop sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm dead serious. Real talk. I'm dead ass. When you see a white, when they saw, yo, look, one of the bailiffs, the black woman bailiff was rubbing her hair to comfort her. And no, like my she nigga. Was, she was brushing her hair. I didn't see the brush now. I saw her brush her hair. I didn't see all that. Yeah. But I, I saw her rubbing the hair. I'm like, this is the, she's killed somebody. You don't think she was brushing her hair like, listen, you're not going to need this. You could sell it to me. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't think, yo, listen, you're not going to need this in jail. Why not? It's hair at the no, end of the day. It's the nice and straight. India yo, India's hair is white. That's honestly how I felt. I felt I, when I saw that, I'm like, that's some bullshit. Yo, but the they judge, were using her for parts. <laughs> no, talk. now hold on. Judges using now, it for her now, hair. Now I'm gonna tell you Those one other thing. I thought. using it for the holes. One other thing I thought. I was like, we making fun of the brother. You know what I'm saying? We're not making fun of him, but we we judging the brother. I think they're Haitian, bro. They are Haitian. I think he might have just wanted to get get close enough to t- get a little hair. A little Voodoo stri- doll. Hey. It's on. <laughs> it's on, hey. baby. Little hug. Ooh. Little- you gonna feel some give pinching it to grandma, in your stomach. It. It's on, baby. Little, give it to grandma, son. You know that's saying? why you can't sleep on this shit. <laughs> grandma got that hair to push. Oh, oh, we will be friends years, one day. Oh, oh, hey, <laughs> hardest ten years of your life. We're gonna, we're gonna make this ten years harder for you. I'm just saying, just to play white devil's advocate. I forgive you, but the puppet won't. Hey, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying, bro. It's a voodoo doll hustle. They knew exactly. Exactly what they was doing Can I the hug whole her? time. Yo, I'm telling you, one of one of the OGs. And he didn't get the hair, and he looked at the judge like, "Do what you need to do." No, one of the, no one of the one of the <laughs> OGs in the family. It, one of the OGs in the family said, "Look, I just need you to get a little piece of her hair." That's sad. And we, that's sad. Yeah. We could handle this sentencing. There you go. Oh, oh you thought it was ten years. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the second she come out, the puppetry begins. It begins. That's what's gonna be happening in jail. <laughs> she gonna be. She gonna go mad in jail. <laughs> Fat. Bro, she's we gonna about go, to find out if she's going real, to go bro. mad in jail. Ooh. Watch, you are gonna hear a story in about a year or two. She's in a psychiatric uh, ward, and everybody gonna be like, "Oh, now she's playing crazy because she's trying to get out." No, 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 I'm telling you, Mm-mm. maybe, Mm-mm. maybe. If it's not that, then it's just plain, yo, you know, Stockholm syndrome. Okay, I got a wild little conspiracy for you. Talk to me. Okay, so. <sighs> Okay, here we go. I gotta be out of here in like five minutes. I think this will take three. Okay. Maybe maybe take a little bit longer, but maybe sure. All right. You know how they're telling us about aliens? Uh, yeah. Okay. So they dropped that video uh, where the U.S. Navy says, hey, the aliens exist. Not exist, but the UFOs videos were real. Yes. And they're, we don't know what those things are. They're unidentified flying objects. They might be UFOs. They might not be. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you know how Trump started Space Force? Yes. I, was Trump the one that started that? Yeah. Okay, yes. Right? So it's basically, we need a Space Force. We need a force we need Avengers. for... Thanos is coming. Something's coming. <coughs> Bob Lazar is on Joe Rogan podcast mm-hmm. talking about Area 51. All these things are kind of happening at the same time. Right? There's all this Mars talk. Been right? going on. Been going on, but a Years. lot of Mars talk. We're talking about they, a real I, Mars bro, mission. Bro, I think they there. Okay, fair enough. And it's possible. Chilling. Do you think it's possible? And this is super conspiratorial. But the billionaires that run the world, outside of the United States, like we're talking about the billionaire elite class that yeah, really yeah, makes yeah. shit happen. Do you think they're like, look, we're far too divided. We hate each other too much. Instead of having a third world war where we all fight each other, should we fake... An alien attack convince all the people on Earth that there is an outside source that could threaten the United, not the United States, could threaten all the people on Earth. Ronald Reagan said that in the 80s. So, so he said that when he said he said he said he had a meeting with Mikhail Gorbachev and he told him, he said, look, man, you know, we're so busy warring with each other. We, we got to worry about what's up there. Yeah. So you don't think that they could possibly fake another attack? They've already been planting the seeds of of UFOs. They've been planting the seeds of aliens. They've been planting the seeds of of us being out there in the world or other things being out there in the world. They 
they fake an alien attack and then all of a sudden U.S. and Russia and U.S. and the Middle East and China, all of a sudden we stop beefing with each other and we start beefing with this fake enemy that's in the sky that they just invented. Is that a possibility? I'm not mad at that. That That's that's definitely a possibility. Um, I thought about something yesterday Mm -hmm. and I think the reason that they're slowly but surely telling us about you know, UFOs and, and extraterrestrial. They're going to start telling us about extraterrestrials and they're going to tell us eventually life exists. It's because I think Earth is a lease, bro. And the lease is run out. I think the lease is up. We I can't run it back. This is a fucking lease. I think that there's a power. There's powers out there greater than us. Life forms out there greater than us. And this is a fucking lease. They have given us, you know, all the tools we need to survive. Mm. They've given us everything that we need to thrive. Like mm. they've given us everything, everything that <clears throat> we could possibly have to be a functioning civilization all throughout the world. They've given it to this creatures called humans. I think the lease is up. That's why I think the earth is rebelling. That's why all that's climate change and global warming and all that shit like that. I think the lease is fucking up and they come in to collect. So that's my take on it. Who is They, Aliens, extraterrestrials. Oh, so you do believe that they're they're truly here and ready to go? I've always thought they were here. I've never, I never thought they were here. I've I thought that they existed, thought they but not here. No, I've all I've always I've always thought they were here in some way, shape, or form. I've always thought that they've I've always thought they've monitored us in some way, shape, or form. I think that I, I think that they're very aware of us, but but where most of us aren't aware of them. But the ones that should know in certain positions in, in the world do know that they, they absolutely know. exist. The people that know, know, and it'll be the right time. And it's to, funny because like, I out. have these conversations with my boy Frosty all the time. And we talk about, it's like, yo, it'd be impossible for them to travel X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, yo, the only reason you feel that way is because you're thinking based off human scale. Human scale. Yeah. yeah, yeah. These people probably so mother, they probably know how to travel time who ben, knows yeah you bend time bend yes, space and then you're yes, talking about yes, alien you, technology every, every yeah. time you find somebody who's bob lazier when he talks about the spaceships and how yeah. the spaceships are built and how they're they're built to almost like break the wind as he said it's like no, putting no, no, a bowling no. ball on a bed yeah to they use gravity to propel yeah, themselves yeah. it's like it's like they're bending the shit like yeah clearly they're more advanced than us yeah you know what i mean like yeah. so for me it's like to sit back and think like oh well now nah, it's not possible because we can't they're do not it. being Please. pushed through the sky they're being like sucked through the sky yeah he said it's like he said if you put a bowling ball on a bed and how the bowling ball drops right exactly so the the drop part is in front of the ship boom and the ship is being pulled into the drop boom and that's why they can shift and turn at boom. these amazing angles yeah Look, it's it's a it's an interesting time. We're aliens to somebody, bro. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent And think about what we would do if we found some aliens. Yes, and it's but by the way, some people on another planet like they only got one dick? Yo. <laughs> they can't believe I'm serious. They probably got two and three dicks that they can change all the fucking Yo. time. <laughs> like, like I'm telling people, you. People are so crazy, like when when they talk about why aliens would be peaceful, you know, people people go, Well, why wouldn't they just be peaceful? What's the big deal? It's like there was a point in time where humans were alien to each other. Like when Christopher Columbus lands yeah. on the Americas, do you think he came through peaceful? Like, yo, what's up? Let's have a picnic. Who is Trump trying to build the wall for? Illegal aliens. That's oh, no, a hate word. You can't even say that anymore. What, aliens? $250,000 fine in New York. They say what? Illegal aliens. Get the fuck out of here. Swear to God, they just Google that shit. Oh, it's not real? That doesn't make no sense. All right, last idea. Because Trump would be the, pers- the person find the most. Why? Because he married one? Yo, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> yo, by the way, you know what would separate aliens? Think about this. Go. You know what would separate alien species from all other humans? What if they just used all their brain power? What if they were capable of using all their brain power? That right there would make them a hundred times more superior than us. If they were capable of using their whole fucking brain. Right. Left brain, right brain. How, yeah. much, how, how much percentage of the brain do humans use, 10%. Chris? 10%. Imagine if we used a hundred. Imagine if you used hundred percent of your brain. That right yeah. there makes you a superior fucking life form. Yeah. So they probably looking at like they only use ten percent of their so brain. So maybe they tapped into that. Okay. Here's here's the last one. Um, and the only reason I'm saying is because I thought of this fucking idea, and then it turns out it already exists. But I thought I had a billion dollar idea. I was thinking about how to save uh, retail. Um, just because all these clothing companies are going out of business, mm-hmm. right? Because everybody's just buying shit online. So. What is that? You're looking at that? Sorry. Okay. So here, you know how they have filters that go on your face for like Snapchat or Instagram? They can actually change the shape of your face. They can Mm -hmm. add like deer ears or rabbit ears or like eyes, et cetera. So what I was saying, the biggest... The biggest hiccup for me for buying anything online is I don't know how it will fit on me and how it will look on me. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So what I want to do is use that same filter technology to portray a shirt on your body. Yeah. You got to get married, bro. Wait for it. Put, put the shirt on the body. Right. And then you can adjust the shirt size based to your body size. And of course, your phone would be able to tell exactly how big you are and the cut and size of that shirt. If you was married, you would know this technology exists. It already exists. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was. I know. You're I, saying you're, for haircuts. Oh, but that has been existed with haircuts. The only problem with haircuts yeah. is that haircuts can't calculate how thick your hair is and the texture of your hair, right? right? But with clothing, it's all about the texture of the shirt, the thickness of the shirt, yeah. the pants, etc. So. I mean, I'm so excited by this idea. I call my my VC buddy who's like, who's, you know, he's in the game, you know, investing in all these companies, that comes to them. I, I got it. I figured it out. We developed this technology and then we licensed it to all the different clothing companies. And it turns out Amazon Echo already developed this Absolutely. fucking shit. Jesus. No ideas original, nothing that's new the, under the sun, baby. These motherfuckers ain't that smart. Like, that, that's why like, we think these motherfuckers are like invent shit with no, Google you know, and you, Amazon. They ain't that fucking smart. No, they are smart. You know, but you know what? They're smart enough to do more than anything. What? Execute. No, no. I, lo- I love execution. Execute. Don't get me wrong. I love execution. I'm just saying, coming up with the idea, like they get paid every single day to just think of ideas. And I thought of that when I got in a taxi on the way to uh, yeah, record yeah, Flavor yeah, yeah. too. That's so why you like, should write everything down. Yeah. Write everything down, Schultz. Yeah. Everything. Treat it like it's your jokes, bro. Yeah, you're right. Treat your ideas like you treat your jokes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's no, there's no idea or premise for a joke that comes in your brain that you don't document somewhere so you can go back and flesh that shit out. Yeah. I do that shit with all my ideas. I get an idea about anything. I write that shit down. I don't care if it's just like one line or something that sparked it. What write you got? it down. You got some heat from me from this week? Oh, I definitely got some heat. Oh, what happened this I week? I got some heat. What you got? I got I got some heat. You got something? Can you share? I'll share with you off here. Oh, is that is that spicy? Um, that really. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's really, it's nothing crazy. It's just some interesting things, but okay. the key is execution. Yeah, yeah. An idea ain't shit, but, but, but a thought. If you don't motherfucking execute 100%. on it. 100%. Like, who gives a fuck? I don't care about I, I don't care. By the way, I used to do that shit to little Duval all the time. Yeah, yeah, with the shirts and Duvall, shit. Duval, you, oh, so you're not going to put that on the t-shirt? I, I'm going to do it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but that puts a spark in him. I'm yeah. about to do the same shit to Killer Mike. Yeah. Because Killer Mike got two good-ass quotes that he has not put on a motherfucking t-shirt yet. What, Kill Your Masters? Well, he, that's on a t-shirt. He got Kill Your Masters okay. shirts. The other one is, um, I married a black woman. Most of my critics did not. Ooh. That's a motherfucking bar. Ooh. The other one is um. Damn, I just texted him that. What was the other one? Hold on, I tell you what the other one is right now. Hold on. That was the Mike. Shout out to Killer Mike. Fucking treasure out here in these. Real street. talk. Oh, what was the other one? Killer Mike said. Oh, I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, by the way, if you get a chance, go listen to um, go listen to Ti and Killer Mike. On Ti's new podcast, which is absolutely probably my favorite new podcast right now, I gotta do that. He hit me up about doing that podcast. You should do it, bro. I, I would love to. No, nah, that shit is really, time. really good. Damn, I can't find the quote. Where the fuck is the quote, man? I don't know. I'll find it later and tell y'all. But go listen to Ke- go listen to Killer Mike on um, Ti's podcast, man, because I thought that shit was amazing. Good go combo. listen to Alex jo- Alex the Jones. Alex Jones is wild or what? I'm one of those people that fuck with Alex Jones, bro. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. I can't say who uh, who said this, but uh, I I have on you know authority someone who I trust said that uh, he said eighty percent of what Alex Jones talks about is right. I'm gonna tell you this. And I told Ti this. I was with Ti yesterday. Eighty percent. So, yeah, the day before. I said, Tip, let me tell you something. Minus seventy nine. I believe everything he says about the government. You guys are wild, man. Bro, he's not saying nothing that black injury rights haven't been saying. Read Behold the okay. Pale Horse. I, I'm very familiar with Behold the Pale Horse. I think Horse. that you, no, in a, in a, in a lot Alex of shit, Jones they try- got his start as a guy who was a, uh, an accolade of uh, the author of Behold the Pale Horse. He was showing up to Waco. When, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's where he got to start. I, oh, well, yeah. He's well, t- he you know sounds just like bring him. In? You should bring in Mark Jacobson, who just wrote the definitive book. That's about, my guy. About Behold the Pale Horse. Yo, and let's bring in guy. Alex and Jones. talks a lot about Alex Jones in his new book. Let's bring in Alex Jones. Alex Jones is full shit. So please, by all Yo, means. Yo, Charlo, let's bring in Alex Jones. Listen, and I just have watch no Chris with it. shit himself the entire <laughs> time. How are you say oh, that? you're already <laughs> free. Act like it. That's the other slogan. You're already free. You're already act free. Like act like it. it. That should be on a t-shirt. Listen, I just think Alex be telling the truth about a lot of the shit that goes on in the government, yo. I can't speak on nothing else. I'm not talking about Sandy Hook shit and all of that, which they li- which he says they lied on him about. I don't know. He said he never said that. He said he never said that it was a false flag. He said he never said, never said it was fake. He said he never said that. I don't know if that's true or not. But all I'm saying is a lot of shit he be talking about when it comes to like 
the food industry and the way wars are started and why wars are started and who people work for and who's really controlling shit. I think he's telling the truth. And I'm going to tell you why else, why, else, why else I think he's telling the truth. He's doing a wild disservice. Keep going. This guy. Keep why going. would they ban him? Keep going. Why would they ban him? Yo, you don't get shut down for, for being wrong. Word. Why would you they ban him? You get shut down for being right. Chris, oh they God. banned him, Chris. I'm talking about, they ban, how you, they ban you from YouTube, social media. Like, why are they trying to shut him up so much? Why? Yes, because he's, he's, he's not the only person out there saying wild shit. people are listening to him. But he's not the only one. Can't even say he's like, he's not the only person saying wild shit, bro. He's beyond wild. Chris has never listened. Artist. Chris has never listened to a single podcast. Listen to Alex on episode. Joe Rogan. No, 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 no. And listen to Alex on Ti podcast. Listen, please, please no, don't, no, 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 don't, no, no. don't even enable this. He's no, never no, no. listened to a single interview. He's never oh listened to a single podcast. I don't think you have. He never listened to a read a single book or anything like that. What'd you listen to? I've listened to his podcast. Which one? Which episode? I don't remember. Come on, bro. You ain't, you ain't listening to shit. You know you're not listening to shit. You formed your opinion. No, 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 your opinion no, 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 no. is what they tell you to think. I it's exactly know. what we were telling, yeah. saying earlier. Yeah. Yeah. You, are, you are saying what I, they told you yeah, to think, Chris. I think Alex Jones says a lot of bullshit and shit I don't agree with, but he also says a lot of shit where I think he's absolutely right. By the way, that's me with most people. I was just about to say most people would describe <laughs> you know their relationship saying? with you, you that know, way. I mean, exactly, that's me with most people. So I'm I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm listening to Alex Jones. Like, damn. And I'm not saying he's right or wrong. I'm just saying like that's a de that's a great point. Or uh, like, yo, I need to do some research into that. Or uh, goddamn, that sounds like it could possibly be true. And once again, I don't think they're trying to ban and shut down the motherfuckers who aren't saying something they don't want you to hear. Exactly. Look, guys, you, come you, on. You formed an opinion about me. Please bring in Mark Jacobson. That's my guy. I know. That's what I'm saying. We've had Mark on before. Who wrote a really good book about William Cooper, who's the author of Behold a Pale Horse, who I wrote a very long article about about 15 years ago. I've done a ton of research into Cooper. Alex Jones is part of that scene. And so, 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 so do you agree with some of the stuff that's been Behold a Pale Horse? I mean, I think there's germs of truth that. Uh, I mean, do I think the government's trying to conceal stuff? Absolutely, I don't doubt it. Okay, so I, I, I think. Uh, that, I mean, look, but when you when you listen to what Mark has to say, and Mark traveled to Arizona, he spent a lot of time around mm -hmm. the scenes. He interviewed tons of people. Unfortunately, just a lot of it is complete fucking bullshit. And it might be, you know, it probably Cooper is. was a wild, out of control alcoholic who made up all sorts of shit. Ninety percent of that shit is fake. Alex Jones is essentially a performance artist who realized that he could say certain things that would get a rise out of people. And does that mean I don't think you should question the government? Absolutely not. I think the government lies about shit every day. Do I think that those guys revealed something or no, it's, it's, it's fucking bullshit. I'm going to sit, I'm going to sit here and say, Chris, I, yeah. I probably do tend to agree with you, but I'm yeah. going to also say, boy, that shit he's saying is entertaining. And I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. He sounds so fucking well researched. He question. Sound, Just here's a question. Yes. Yeah. Is it possible that is it possible that anything any of the things he says are right? You said germs. I mean, is he talking about issues in the food industry and how it's being manipulated? Yes. Now, yo, yo, ninety percent of the shit he says is in Behold the Pale Horse, and I didn't even know that. So, I just, I just yeah, said yeah, that. Ninety percent of Behold the Pale Horse is bullshit. Unfortunately. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I, I wanted Behold the Pale. Pale horse to be true, but okay. we don't know if but it's let's true. Let's go back. Let's go back. Well, so there's no, a there's I, a chance. So there's a chance that there's a chance that some of the stuff he says is true, or none of it's true. I would, if I had to argue without having listened to every single podcast of his, um, guessing the vast, vast, vast majority of his shit. So you don't think it's sixty foot praying mantis people at the border? I don't think they fucking faked a bunch of kindergartners getting killed. He I never. He said he never said that. Okay. I don't know if that's true All or right. not. Um, but I, yeah, I don't agree with that. Know, I don't know why the fuck he had llamas in his studio the other day. You know, like llamas. He had some. Michael Jackson thing. walked around with llamas all the he time. Nobody questioned it. Where he brought in llamas. The other why day. is the llamas the problem? <laughs> He's a charismatic performance artist, in my opinion. Michael Jackson had llamas, fucking bubbles, giraffes. Nobody said shit. Yeah, he's just trying to ball out, bro. All right, I mean, Stop I'll you hate, mad, I think Chris, you mad you can't hater, afford a llama, bro. Real talk. Man. That's what that shit sound like to me, Chris. That does. I'll let him breathe. But seriously, if he's somebody that you seriously... Yo, let's, we're bringing on Alex Jones. ...are interested in... 
Let's bring him on. You should listen to him on TI podcast. Oh, she I was will. very interesting. All right. I'll you listen to that expeditiously. Go, but what if start? we bring T what if we bring Alex and Mark in at the same Mark, time? Yeah, bring Mark in. You guys trust Mark, right? That's my guy. I don't know yeah, Mark. You know Mark, Mark, Mark. You know Mark, OG Mark. Mark, man. He did a he did a he New did York that writer. Yeah, he did the New Yorker a piece on me back in the day. Oh, Mark. Mark. Yeah, Mark no, Jacobson. I literally just wrote a book about this. I'm, I'm, about I, Alex Jones. I, we well, had Alex him on. Jones is a character in it. Bill Cooper is the main feature. I went to his, you know, book signing at the Strand. Me and him had lunch. I've read the book. Like we've had a lot of discussions about. It. I'm not just throwing this shit out there. Like I've actually done. A and he's saying that time. Alex is making shit up. Absolutely, and he says Bill Cooper did too. Really? I don't know who Bill Cooper is. Bill Cooper's the author of Behold the Pale Horse, and Mark did a ton of research. He Look, went. What if Mark got paid heavily by the government just okay, to fucking well, um? You know, I don't know. Maybe throw Mark shit on their name so you nobody think that happens. Them. You don't think that happens? You don't think the government I has can, people working I'm for them? Pretty sure that Mark is not on the uh, payroll of the Dude, CIA. it's called controlled opposition. Come on, bro. That's Maybe. how it works. I don't think Mark doesn't describe me as that type of person, but yeah, it's possible. It, Some it, people it. say that's what Farrakhan is. No way. Some people say, absolutely. I'm not. not saying that that's the case, but some people say, hey, the reason why he's allowed to say all this shit is because certain groups need a bad guy so that they can point at. They can be like, see, look, see, that I guy I think hates Farrakhan's us. allowed to say all of this stuff because he's powered by God, <laughs> okay? Because God will not allow anything to happen to the minister and the government knows if they lay a hand on Minister Farrakhan, it will be hell to pay and everything that's in Behold the Pale Horse will come fucking true, okay? Listen, that's a lot like him. <laughs> that's what Jeffrey Epstein thought. They need to get people out of there. They get people the fuck out of here, bro. Jeffrey wasn't doing nothing but fucking little girls and boys. <laughs> Was he fucking him? Was he? No, he, he did that. that. That's the reason. I, How crazy is it that reason, that story's listen, done? We don't the, even care. No, no, no talk about, But listen, <laughs> the only reason Jeffrey Epstein is dead yeah. is because, and, 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 and I don't want nobody to take it out of context when I said he was only fucking little girls and boys. What I yeah. meant by that is that is the way of a lot of those billionaires. That's why they killed Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, yeah. They didn't want Jeffrey Epstein to be the motherfucking whistleblower. And do you know who probably would talk about that and probably been talking about that? Who? Chris? Alex Jones, Oh, Alex bro. Jones? I didn't hear Mark talk about that. <laughs> Shit, because Mark, Mark worked on that island. And Mark might on be on that, that island. island, bro. All right, I got my guy in here, man. One of my favorite authors. Uh, he goes by the name of Ryan Holiday. He's written such books as Obstacle is the Way, uh, trust me, I'm lying. Ego is the enemy. I read his daily stoic every morning. If you ever see me post like um, these daily stoic messages on Instagram, they come from a book that he wrote called The Daily Stoic. And he's got a new book out right now called Stillness is the Motherfucking Key. Well, not motherfucking, but stillness is the key. That's Ryan Holiday. Time. Yeah, thanks for having me. What's happening, my guy? Not much. Just good to be here. What What is the importance of stillness, man, especially in today's society? I think stillness, we is where all the good stuff in life comes from. Mm -hmm. Whether it's like at home or whether you're doing your work, nobody does good work, makes good decisions, is happy when they're overwhelmed, when they're overworked, when they're reactive, when they're being, you know, and, and, and whether that's being reactive to external stuff or just like the shit you got going on inside. It's impossible. Is, it's impossible to be still then. Yeah. It's a day society. Yeah, we we certainly don't have a world that's designed to encourage stillness. But I mean, it's always it's always been super hard. I mm -hmm. mean, people don't like being alone with their own thoughts, so they that's why they invade other countries or try to invent things or you know work 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 because they they're afraid of looking in the mirror or looking inside. So you feel like everybody feels that way. Everyone struggles with it in some form or another. I think, and uh, it's just like. For people who are out like doing real stuff, this the the importance of it is greater. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if you're just uh, selling insurance in a small town, okay, the stillness isn't costing you that much. It's just it's just probably just costing you personally. But, you know, if you play sport, if you play professional sports, or you perform at the highest level, or if your job depends on creativity and breakthroughs, like if you're if you're not able to slow things down and really look clearly and and really analyze what's happening. How are, how you're going to get your lunch eaten? So let me ask you a question. If 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 you know stillness is the key to happiness, how come people who, I guess, are just bums, right? Like that don't have a care in the world. You know what I'm saying? Live with they they mom, they dad, and like yeah. they they don't have a desire to do anything more. Like yeah, they just sure. going through life. Why aren't they necessarily more happy? 
are the happiest people. Yeah, yeah. I, I think when you're leaving potential on the table, mm -hmm. there is like a lot of nagging doubt and insecurity. I don't think, I think if you, if you know you're wasting your life and it's like tick, ticking away, I think that's causing all sorts of existential dread. You what know? if you don't feel that way? What if you really don't feel like you're wasting your life? You're just like, this is just life. But I think you, I think deep down you feel it. That's yeah, why, yeah, yeah. You, that's why you don't want to turn off the TV. Cause if, if you are, if you stop, you are forced to see yourself. Got you. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, do you I think that's why they say so much angry shit on the internet. Those people. That, it you know gave them I mean? outlet. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're, they're really bitter. Deep down, they're really bitter and resentful. You, you say uh, on the inside panel of the book that stillness can be cynically confused for idleness. Yeah. So how, how can you decipher the difference? Well, we think, you know, we think stillness is just laying around. Like when mm -hmm. you think stillness, you think not doing anything. But I think when you're still, you're actually doing the really, the really important stuff. You know what I mean? Like even meditation, which I, I'm, I'm not a big proponent of, but like you, the person looks like they're not doing anything, but actually they're exerting all sorts of self-control. You know what I mean? Like it's hard to sit there and not have your thoughts just run like crazy. That yeah. takes work, man. Yeah. So, so what, what does stillness look like? Like, what is that? For people that are listening right now, they're like, what, what the fuck is stillness? Does that mean just sit in one spot? Like, what does stillness yeah. look like? I think it, it looks, it, it manifests itself in a bunch of different ways. But like, to me, I think so. it's like presence. Mm -hmm. Like when you're like, for me, I'm sitting there writing. I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm like all in on this task in front of me. That's one of them. Stillness is like when you're really playing with your kids. Do you know what I, like you're again, you're not, th you're not thinking of anything else. You're just like, this is what we're doing. We're sitting here playing in the sand. Enjoying right? the moment. Yeah. Stillness is when you're in a, in a, uh, on a walk in a park and mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're actually seeing what's around you. It's not, you're, you're, you know, you're not distracted. You're actually seeing and experiencing what's going on. Stillness is when you're, you know, you've got 30 opportunities being thrown at you and you're able to sort of go, who do I actually want to be? What do I actually want to do? What, like, what gets me closer to where I want to be? Ooh. You know, that, uh, like stillness to me is like the, the batter, uh, looking at the pitcher and deciding like which pitches to not swing at, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But most of us were just like, we think like success in life is like swing, 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 swing. And it's, that's, that's a recipe for disaster. Expound on that a little bit. Cause I think a lot of people feel like the more opportunities that come your way, you should take every opportunity yeah. and that's what success is. But to me, just being busy for the sake of being busy is not success. No, like when I look at, when I talk to people and they're like, the other day I was like on some phone call with someone and we were going to do something together. And like the, the call was scheduled for like 450. I was like, you're scheduling down to like 10 minutes. Like, it's not like we got on the phone at 4.50. Like we scheduled it, not for 4.30, not for five. They were scheduling down to like 10 minute blocks. I was like, that sounds like a not fun life. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, because they, you so, like a, a friend of mine is a psychologist. He, he worked for the Mets for a long time. And he was telling me this, like when you start in baseball, they like, for, especially guys from the Dominican, they're like, uh, you don't walk off the island, meaning like you swing off the island, right? Like you hit, you get there because you swing at pitches and you hit the ball. Mm -hmm. Because then you get to the majors and now it's all about plate discipline, right? Like the pitcher's trying to trick you into swinging at pitches you can't hit. And so the key is like, oh, that's, that is almost a good pitch, but it's not the right pitch. Mm -hmm. You know, I got, I could write any book I want, but I, what's the right book? You know, what, if, if this is my last book, am I doing it the right way? Am I, you know, there, and, and I, we were talking about this. It's like, you could do lots of different ideas, but the difference between the, the right idea and the almost right idea could be millions of dollars, or yeah. it could be, uh, the difference between hitting your audience and nobody caring. And so you got to have that discipline. Yeah. That's the point I think I'm at in my life right now. Like, you know, it's, Tons of opportunities out there. And back in the day, I would have just grabbed everything, yeah. everything, everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I remember, you know, hearing Kevin Hart say back in the day how he just didn't turn anything down. Yeah. You know, and now I'm at that point where I don't want to do everything. I want to sit still and do the right thing. Yeah. And like, what is success? What what good is success if you can't say no? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yes. isn't the whole point of success? To me, success and autonomy are the same word. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if, if becoming more successful means I have less freedom, then I'm actually less successful. 
You know, like if, yeah. if I can't say no, because either like some insecure part of me is like afraid of being irrelevant or whatever, if, cause I say no, that's not success. Or if success is like, you know, you hear people complain, like, I gotta go do this. I gotta go do this. You know, the, the company says I have to, or the con that's like a shitty place to be, mm. you know? Is that the same as saying I'm a slave? Somebody's a slave to their urges? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of people who are, they're not slaves to their their career, but they're slaves to sex, or yeah. they're slaves to social media, or they're slaves to their ego. Look at, like, people go like, why can't Donald Trump not tweet? Why can't, it's like, he does not have a choice. Yeah, not, yeah, it's not yeah. the profession, but personally, he has no ability to stop. And that that is not, He's the most powerful man in the world, but he actually has like the fewest options of anyone in the world because oh, of who he is. I want to get into that, but to, to me, that sounds like a, being a slave to relevancy. All of this sounds like being a slave yeah. to relevancy. Like if you can't say no to opportunities or if you constantly got to be on social media, it's just yeah, like a, yeah. it's, you're a slave to wanting to be what that word relevant. Yeah. I mean, look at the core. Donald Trump is a slave to the attention. He needs yeah, attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the attention is a cruel mistress because it's like there's an unlimited. So he's chasing it all the time. And I think we know, like, I know people that are like slaves to drama, right? So it's like things are good. And, and so these are not like public people, but it's like things are good. And because they don't want them to be good, they got to blow up their life. That's mm -hmm. why they, you know, they, they talk behind someone's back or they, you know, they get involved in this or they jump into other people's business, right? Like, Cause they, they can't, life can't be good for them. It's gotta be like, you know, the real housewives all, they're all slaves to drama. Do you know what I mean? But that's television though. So it's scripted. So actually the producers and the networks are sure. slaves to drama. Cause they but know I mean, that's what we bring know people like that. Those people yeah, yeah, exist yeah. in Absolutely. real life. And it, that's a crappy way to live. And what's so funny about those people is they're always like, why is it like this? Mm -hmm. You know, they're always like, why is my life? Why are people always yelling at me? And it's like, cause you can't stop yourself. You know, I, I told you earlier, one of my favorite chapters in the book is Beware Desire. Yeah. And it's, uh, you started off by saying every man has a passion gnawing away at the bottom of his heart, just as every fruit has its worm. And it's about uh, Alexandra Dumas. And, and the reason that chapter, you know, hit me so hard because it talked about John F. Kennedy. Yeah. And he was a slave to pussy. Yeah, basically. You know? And drugs, too. He was on drugs, too? Yeah, yeah. He had this terrible back injury. So, like, this was back when doctors would be like, oh, here's, you know, heroin, basically, or whatever. Here's really? Speed. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was not, it was, it was not fun to be John F. Kennedy, you know, but yeah, he was like in the Cuban missile or yeah, in the Cuban missile crisis, the world is about to end instead of going home and seeing his beautiful wife and his kids on what might be the last day on earth. He has one of his like goons bus in some co-ed from some college mm -hmm. so they can hook up in a white house hotel room. That's to me, that's really sad. Yeah. And it was so much layers to that chapter. Cause you talk about how he, he would say he would get sick if he didn't fuck another girl every few days. Yeah, yeah. He he says this to like the prime minister of Britain. He's like, he's like, you get headaches when you don't have sex, right? And the dude's like, what are you talking about? He's like, first off, this is not what presidents should be talking about. But he's like, that's not healthy, man. That's bad. But that's what addiction looks like. Like we're so wrapped up in it, we can't even understand how ridiculous it is. But he learned that from his father. Yeah, his father would bring home mistresses or take them on family vacations. And everyone would just have to pretend like, oh, this is Susan. She's dad's friend from work. You oh, know, that mercy. fucks you up. Yeah. Yeah, I was telling you earlier, like, you know, when I confronted my father with cheating on my mom back in the day, he looked me in my eyes and said, oh, you only got one girlfriend? Yeah. He was like, when you get older, you're going to understand. That shit fucked me up. Because I always thought having, since from that moment on, yeah. I thought having one girlfriend, even though it felt... Super unnatural to be with five, six different women. I always feel like having one girlfriend, something was wrong with it. Well, Tiger Woods' dad would take his son on golf tournaments, but it was really an excuse for him to go get drunk and cheat on his wife on the road. Mm -hmm. And so you got, we got, it's not that you give Tiger Woods a pass, but it makes more sense why he would blow up his amazing life the way that he did. It was learned behavior. It was learned, it's, it's learned behavior from the person you are supposed to be learning good things you're, from. You're superhero, the superhero, the, yeah. the, the man that you're supposed to learn, you know, I guess everything everything about being a man from. You yeah. know I mean? That's why I always say, when I say we were raised wrong, especially yeah. me, I always say I was raised wrong because of my father and my uncles. And that reflected in even the music of hip hop, you know, the misogynistic yeah. shit, the chauvinistic shit, like all of that was because of upbringing. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then it, I think as a father, you got to go like, it doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what my rules are. It doesn't matter what schools I send them to. At the end of the day, like the best thing you can do is just not be a shitty person in front of your kids. Yeah. Or not even, because some dads, they're like, oh, I'm good when I'm around my kids, but my in secret, I'm, I'm fucking around. It's like, no, you got to be a good, best thing you can do to be a good dad is just like, be a good person. Can a person like that ever find stillness? Meaning like you're John F. Kennedy, you're the president. So you present one way. Yeah. But behind the scenes, you move in a whole nother way. Can a person like that ever truly have stillness? I think, I, I mean, it's, it's Tiger Woods said this. He's like, look, when you're lying and cheating, your life is actually not fun. It might seem fun to other people, but it sucks. Tell and, me about it. Um, so I, I stopped cheating. Yeah. 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 Who wants to have a secret life? Mm -hmm. So I think you've got, it's hard and you got to be willing to commit to doing work on yourself and you got to, you got it. So you got to do that. I think most people are not willing to do that work. And you said something in the book, man, you talked about, and I, I know the feeling you talk about how you feel after you cheat. Yeah. Like the guilt, the, yeah. the, the, the lying, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the disloyalty, like, you know, you don't feel trustworthy. You feel like a fucking snake. Yeah. You just finished doing some dirt. Then you're going back and laying with this woman that you claim to love. You know what I'm saying? But you know, you, you bullshitting her. Yeah. And I'm like, that feeling doesn't feel good. Right. So you want to flash forward to that thing, you know, as you're, it's like, uh, it's, it's like when people want to buy something really expensive, mm -hmm. it's like, think about how you actually feel after you buy, you feel guilty it's like, this wasn't worth it. You know, like, so, so don't get caught up in the rush or the desire of the thing. You got to go like, how am I going to feel after? Like, it's like how you feel right after you come. Do you know what I mean? You feel guilty, right? Like you, there's a, oh, like, there's a I feel a little tired. You yeah. Know, you, the guilt you feel tired, later. but you, you yeah. have a swear. You don't go like, ah, that was worth all of it. You know, like, no, that's not don't. the feeling you feel. It is worth it, but not worth all of it. That's what I mean. Yeah. But your mind, as you want, whatever that thing is, whether it's like a Bentley or whether it's that you want to break up with someone or whatever, you know, whatever that thing is, you tell yourself, when I get what I want, it's going to be amazing. The experience is going to be amazing. But that's just how the mind tricks us mm -hmm. into, you know, like, it's good evolutionarily to cheat. You know, like, if that makes sense. What do you mean? Break that down. Well, it's like, evolutionary to cheat. Well, so write this down, you cheaters. You might can use this at home. Well, think, this think might be a good one. Think about it. Like the more people you have sex with, that's better for your DNA, like the spread of your DNA. So you could see why like spreading your seed. Yeah. You could see why your genes are like, I'm going to trick Charlemagne into blowing up his life to have one extra kid. That's good over generations. But as far as like your personal happiness, like. It's lying to you. Well, hold on now. Let's talk about that a little deeper, right? Like, because think about it. If that, which, what you're saying to me is a natural thing. If my genes are telling me to do something, that means it's natural. What keeps me from doing it is legislation, basically. You know what I'm saying? Well, there's this thing called the natural, uh, the naturalistic fallacy, where just because it's natural doesn't mean it's right. It's like, think about it. Uh, it's natural to be jealousy or to be jealous. It's mm -hmm. natural to be irrationally angry at thinking someone might uh, be in love with your wife or girlfriend. Uh, still not okay to murder them, but like your brain might in the heat of the passion might be like, I got to do this, you know? Like, so evolutionarily we have these drives that make sense if we're monkeys, but we're not monkeys and we're not just like the sole goal is not, the propagation of our DNA. The, the goal is to be uh, fully realized human beings. But you don't take vows not to be jealous. You don't take vows not to be envious. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you can't, you can't get a divorce and lose half of everything because you're jealous of somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But I think, I think, like what marriage is or what relationships are, is a short term trade off for long term gain. Mm -hmm. But we're really bad at doing like, it's like, you know, if you take your savings and you put it in the stock market over 40 years, it'll be worth a lot. But if you're watching the news every day, you're like, I got to sell it. I got to put, you know, so it's like you, we make, we, we realize that as human beings, we're, we're, we're really bad at like evaluating things in the short term. And we often do things that are in our long term, not in our interests but in the short term feel emotionally fulfilling or 
anxiety reducing or whatever. Mm -hmm. So like, I think that's why we have vows and that's why we have structure. And that's why we have friends who try to keep us accountable. They're like, what they're saying is like, that might feel good right now, but you're going to regret it later. And so that's what we got to work on. And you said a person enslaved to their urges is not free. Yeah. I mean, look, there are billionaires I know that feel much less rich than like totally ordinary middle-class people that I know. Like Seneca, who I write about a lot in the books, you know, he's like, poverty is not having too little, it's wanting more. So, I, like, let's not be flip about people who are in real poverty, mm-hmm. but like, what real, what the, the, po- in the first world, what poverty usually is, is feeling like you don't have enough because you're comparing yourself to other people. So, you meet these billionaires and you're like, oh, your life must be awesome. But it's like, no, they're like, grinding every day because they're they can never feel like they have enough when it comes to somebody like john f kennedy right what if pussy is the stillness so uh they've talked a lot they talked to a lot of john f kennedy's girlfriends and Mm -hmm. so first off from what we understand because of his like terrible back injury sex probably hurt he just had to lay like basically he laid there on his back and then like the woman was on top He's the president of the United States of America. Why should he be doing the fucking? No, like he but, should be. but it's because physically it was painful for mm-hmm. him. They, they were like, it was mechanical and it was joyless. And it was like, it was basically like masturbating with somebody's help. That's what sex was for him. And so it wasn't like, like, like maybe, it, maybe there's somebody who's just like, I'm a romantic. And for me, it's about falling in love and the connection and yeah. the experience. You ain't got time for that when you marry. You need a president. You got to get back to work. But but for him, for him, it was a compulsion just in the way for someone else, compulsion might be getting high or it might be, you know, like for Donald Trump, the compulsion is like, I got to have attention. I got to dominate. Yeah. You know, and it's like, he's not enjoying this. Like it sucks. So there, there can be no stillness in that whatsoever. Like, cause, cause I think people do things like that for an escape, right? Yeah, I don't think there can be stillness in anything you're doing. Like, look, traveling is wonderful Mm -hmm. uh, and beautiful, but I have a friend who's like clearly addicted to traveling. Like, he can't be home for more than a couple days before he's like planning the next trip. Yeah. So that's it. When he lands in Rome or when he lands in Bangkok, he's having a fundamentally different experience than I am. I'm breathing it in. I'm enjoying it. This is wonderful. This is different. For him, he's like, he's on the run. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that, though, because I tell people all the time, you know, one of the main reasons I started going to therapy is is because I was on vacation and, and I had this sense of serenity and this sense of no anxiety and no worry for this moment. And I was like, yo, how can I feel like this all the time? Yeah. Because I can't take vacations all the fucking time. You yeah, know what I mean? Of course not. So he's, he's probably chasing that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, look, at what we're really good at is taking that thing and turning it into our job. Right. Mm. Like, like. A lot of people's escape is their work. You know, it's like work for work. You control, right? But other people are complicated. Life is complicated. Our emotions are complicated. So we go like, I'm going to do this thing. So I never have to think about how angry I am at my dad or how lonely I feel or what a, you know, what a loser I feel like. And so we, we do, do, do. So we don't have to look in the mirror. Mm Mm-hmm. But if like there's a story I, I tell about in the book, Johnny Cash comes off tour one day and he lands at LAX. He walks up to the counter and he goes like, I would like a, a plane ticket. She's like to where? And he's like, wherever the next plane is going. Like wow. he, he worked all day. He worked for months and he doesn't even want to leave the airport to go home because he's running from what's at home. Yeah. 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 And that's terrible. That That's not success. Nah, Chris, feel free to jump in on this if you want to, because I saw you shaking your head when he was talking about John F. Kennedy being whack in bed. And I was like, damn, did Chris fuck him? So, no, I mean, that's pretty well known. I mean, he he was pretty much like, I guess you would call it like an amphetamine addict. And they were also shooting him up with basically like I, you would call it like a happy shot. I think is yeah. how they described it, where, you know, he had, so he had Addison's disease, which... Is that like an autoimmune? I don't know exactly. Yeah, it was like, it, it was just super painful. And then he, he hurt his back. back and, which was legit yeah. in the PT. You know, when he was in, he was a war hero uh, in World War II. And during the incident that kind of made his fame, I guess legitimately he busted his yeah. back up pretty badly. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know what John F. Kennedy's like in bed. I only know it from, uh, 
I'm I'm into James Elroy. I don't know if you've read any yeah, of his yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, so. good stuff. Well, and and it was it's not just like he wasn't that good in bed or whatever, but like he hooked up with like a German spy. He right. hooked up with like a mob boss's girlfriend. He would he, he was almost addicted to the thrill of hooking up with people that were really da- like right. It, it, you know they say like in sex addiction, it's like is this causing problems in your life? It's like mm. when you're president, you're hooking up with a mob boss. That's one of the reasons they think the mob might have been involved in assassinating. He was all tied up in this yeah stuff. i mean if, if if you believe elroy and elroy is a fiction writer at yeah. least for the most part kennedy was exposed he was vulnerable because everybody knew what his addiction was and they would just send drugs and pussy adam and he couldn't say no and if you want to make a parallel i mean you guys are talking about trump's addiction yeah it's exposed him it's yeah. his vulnerability so it's these guys who get to a certain point and they can't say no to these things and then people prey on that so basically. trump's addiction is attention it's attention, but it's also sex. I mean, I think. I mean, I think if you were to dig into Trump's sex life, he's been rolling in those circles with the Epstein's, with the Clintons, whoever it is. Like, it's, it's pretty much in plain sight how yeah. he gets down. I wouldn't be mad at Trump for that though, only because he's not a traditional politician. Like, you know, he didn't grow up sure. supposed to be squeaky clean and shit. Sure. He was a reality show star, playboy billionaire. You know what I mean? But, and, and like less high stakes, like a good example is like what happens is like your people's identity, like they're so insecure that they need to always be accomplishing to feel good about themselves. And that's why they can't say no to stuff. So they can't say no to this half good opportunity because like the insecurity of Pat, they're like, Oh, I'm not going to, there's this, uh, I, t- I talk about in the book, but there's this crazy video of Joan rivers where they're like, Joan, why do you keep working so much? Like, and why do you do all these like crappy things? She's like, look at my calendar. She's like, she flashes forward a couple months and she's like, see these blank pages, see these blank dates. She's like, if this isn't filled up, it means I'm nothing. And my entire career was a waste. Wow. And you're just like, oh man, that's so sad. You're like one of the best who ever did it. And all you're thinking about is like, if I'm not working in Atlantic City in some tiny room three months from now, like I suck. So that's that Colin Powell quote of avoid having your ego so close to your position that when your position falls, your ego goes with it. For sure. For yeah. sure. Now I want to talk about uh, accept a higher power, that chapter. Yeah. Cause I thought that was a very dope chapter because you quote this philosopher named Nassim. And you say it's Nassim not- Nassim Taleb, you would like him. What's his name? Like Nassim? Nassim Taleb. Okay. He, uh, he wrote this book, The Black Swan, and okay. a book called Anti-Fragile. I need to he's, fuck with him. Yeah, he's great. And you say it's not that we need to believe that God is great, only that God is greater than us. Yeah. Expound on that a little bit. Look, I, for a long time, I was an atheist. Uh, I grew up religious and I became an atheist. And then I, what I came to believe is that I can't quite get there. I can't quite get there that there's a God. But what I've worked towards is the is more the humility of like, I don't know. Right. You know what I mean? When you have this certainty of like, like, how could I possibly know? Because yeah. I've read one book. Like I know at the same time, I think it's a little ridiculous. People are like, there's definitely a God and he's talking to me and he's telling me what to do. That strikes me as a bit egotistical too. But like, I, I want to get to a play. Like to me, it's more like, my understanding of God or higher power, and this is what they talk to you about in 12-step groups, it's like, it's just like that you're not in control. You know, like, that the, the, the universe is, is in control. You are not. You are not the center of the universe. It's like, whether you believe there is a God or not is almost secondary, is almost less important than just let's stop believing that you're God. In your case, this is funny, but, uh, you know what I mean? Like, you, you know, like people yeah. walk around going like, I'm God, the universe revolves around me. And then they're, then something bad happens and they're like, what's the, how could this happen? Why me? And it's like, cause bad shit happens to people every day and you're not special. Well, I, I mean, I call myself God because, you know, in Genesis chapter 126, it says God created man in his image yeah. according to his likeness. And, you know, I grew up studying the 5% teachings and the 5% teachers teach you that the black man is God and God is a Greek word, you know, derived from the Aramic words, Guma Azaba, which means wisdom, strength, and beauty. So the, the Greek students used to identify their Egyptian teachers as that. Yeah. So you know what I mean? So I'm yeah. not saying I'm God. Yeah. The, the creator, end all, be all. I'm just an extension of that higher power. Yeah, yeah. I think that's right. And, and like, uh, you, you, just, you just have to, you need something above you Right, so you don't, so your ego doesn't uh, fill up that space. Yes, Andrew Schultz just walked in. Schultz, hey man, I'm sorry, I'm late. How you doing? What up, Hezzy? For sure. We're we're talking about this chapter in uh, Stillness is the key card. Accept a higher power. You you say for people who don't believe in God, and you you just said it a little bit. If you say we are 
you you say if we are products of evolution and randomness, right? So this is yeah, for yeah. the atheists, yeah, like the people who think it's about science, gravity, physics, like. But you still have to accept that there is something bigger than you. Why why do people not want to accept that something's bigger than them? Well, because we want to be the center of the universe. We want to. We want this illusion that like we're in control. And that this is all like just the idea that like we're like monkeys on this rock spinning in space. That's mm-hmm. like frightening. Ve- it's it's frightening. It's very frightening. it's very humbling. So we'd rather be like, oh no, uh, like I am the the. Uh, it's all about me. Like uh, this is special. Like just the idea that like uh, who knows? Like I, I think that humility is really important. What's, what's strange to me is like, how can you not be humble? If you just look at the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, just yeah. look at the earth, travel, look, look, open up the window on a plane and look out there. Like, sure. you know what I mean? Go look at some mountains, look at other animals and other species. Like, how can you not be humble? But people are too busy watching reruns of Big Bang Theory on the plane to look out the window, right? Yeah. Like that. So we, we, you have to be, that's what stillness is about, is about taking that time to do that because what comes out of that is like more self-awareness and humility and some quiet. And I think also gratitude, you know, just the idea of like, oh, this is totally random, but somehow it worked out for me that like, I'm a lot, like, it doesn't make any sense that we're he- like, so if you look at it from an evolutionary or scientific standpoint, it's absurd that we're here. Like the mm. odds that we're here is like so astronomically preposterously unbelievable you should almost get to the same spot as like, no, God made all this and wants us for here. me. Yeah. It, Cause it's some, it still <laughs> that, was that, made for you. How do you balance you. that equation? Like, how do you balance the equation? There's all these people starving. There's all these people struggling and you have all this abundance yeah. without thinking someone's looking out. Yeah. 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 There, there's uh the, the result of this kind of thinking should be an immense amount of gratitude and an, an immense amount of satisfaction with what you have rather than going like, well, yeah, all that's really good, but if I don't have the most money out of all of the people on the planet, then then it sucks to be me. Right. Is is that how you balance your success? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think like how many people would kill to have one book, let alone this many. Right. And like, wait, I'm going to be sitting here and going, but this person's book came out at the same time and they sold 10% more copies. This was a failure. Like, right. you know, like there are people who just found out their kids have cancer. Like mm. this is ridiculous. This is, it's ingratitude is preposterous if you think about it that I, way i was thinking more like uh, i've noticed a theme with your books is kind of like understanding this world yeah that we're in and like even understanding success yeah and is is this your way of trying to like cope with your success or you're like i think so all right Could, do you believe in god are you uh, i'm i i've gotten i'm agnostic i just don't know right you don't yeah. know so it's yeah. like okay let me search for another reason why i have all this fucking success because there's got to be a reason yeah, I, it can't be that you're just so special. I, it's definitely, I definitely remind myself it's not because I'm special, right? right? I think it's because I got dealt a hand and I played the hand well, What's right? Wrong with like, feeling like you're special about it. Well, that's the tough thing. It's right. It's like you look at a guy like, especially, you know, we've all come from. How do we say? It? I don't want to say just because you come from like privilege, right? Doesn't mean that you're gonna be as successful as you are, right? No. So like the three of us uh, in this room have come from different levels of privilege, right? But like we've all achieved, we've all out achieved our success, yeah, right. You look at Charlemagne. It's it would be hard for you to not look at yourself as special. I look at you as special, seeing from where you came from to where you are now. How do you balance? How do you tell him? How do you go? You're not special. Like, how the fuck? But, but, but listen, I get what Andrew's saying because I think feeling like you're special is what it's an advantage. Prevails, uh, propels you. It's what helps you get to this point. Like, Ryan, you're not the average author. I read a lot of books. Like, you're one of my favorite authors for a reason. But so here's, here's why you want to keep that in check. Napoleon. Special guy, right? Yeah. Short, he comes from nothing. Also. He accomplishes yeah. all this Shout stuff. Out to the that was Charlemagne's second name. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so he's going to be Napoleon He's clearly, he's he clearly special. He's brilliant. <laughs> he's a comp. And then he goes, that people are like, hey, invading Russia. Bad idea. They got this winter and uh, kills a lot of people and you're not ready. And he goes, I'm special. Mm. The rules don't apply. So so you keep it, you keep it in check because yeah. it makes you overreach, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I don't feel like that. Right. Yeah, right. I feel you, what you're saying, though. But yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, because so I'm, I'm, you, I, I, yeah. I'm open to learning new things and I'm open to other people's, you know, critique and other people's opinions. So that's the distinction I make between confidence and ego. Mm. 
confidence is like, I know what I'm capable of. I know what I, what I, what I've done. I know what my skills are, but I also know these are my flaws, right? right? Ego is like, of course I'd be a good president, right? Like, uh, even though I have no training and a horribly <laughs> unpresidential temperament and threatened by other people, uh, by other smart people. And I don't play by the rules. I'm just, you know, you, you get where I'm going. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it, it, he had a skill set that made him good at running for president, but terrible at being, being. president. Right. And, and, it, but the irony is like, he could have been a good president, just like basically anyone could be a good president if you're just willing to listen. You're willing to listen and go, here are my weaknesses. I'm going to take uh, steps that counteract those weaknesses. Gotcha. But that, so to me, that's where that specialness is like, oh, whatever I want, I'm going to do. Like Kanye West, super talented, uh, he looks at his success in music. He goes, of course I'm going to crush it in fashion, mm-hmm. you know, and then ends up losing 30 plus million dollars. Cause you can't, he can't go like, well, these strengths that work for me in the music business are going to work against me here. So like what countermeasures am I going to put in a place? Didn't he go and make like a billion dollar business now? I don't know. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. But maybe, yeah. so maybe he, maybe he did it, but, yeah. uh, but you get what I'm I saying. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. They Just because so you're push. good at one thing doesn't mean you're going to be good at everything. Okay. Here, here's something I often think about like with athletes and it's easier to think compartmentalized with athletes, right? It's like, um, you're, you're a pitcher, right? So uh, you're, you're gifted with this natural ability to throw the ball like fast and accurate. Yeah. Right. But you want to take that to an elite level. Right. So all of a sudden maybe you start swimming because you've realized that motion swimming, like work certain muscles and you work the muscles in your hands. You try to get that competitive advantage on the people in your field by like doing specific things. I remember yeah. Kobe Bryant said when he was trying to play D on Allen Iverson, he studied the movements of sharks because he thought that yeah, hey, yeah. I move like a okay, shark. Yeah. So he's like, maybe I, I'll help me do it, right? And I often think like, how do we, uh, let's call this the intellectual field, even yeah. though it sounds douchey to even say, yeah. but like, how do we outside the physical yeah. field, like get these competitive advantages? I feel like I'm at my best when I'm emotionally abundant or like full. Yeah. When I like, I'm not operating from the void of how do I feel good or validated? Yeah. I'm actually over and I can be like, man, I love your book, Ryan, yeah. or Charlamagne, you're the best. Or like, I feel when like you're I coming can from a pure place. Yeah. When I don't need, when I'm yeah. not taking. Sure, right? sure, sure, sure. So I'm like, how do I set myself up to be like that? Uh, I don't, maybe you can't be like that all the time, but the most amount of time. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I feel like when I'm, you know, just dabbling into your stuff, a lot of that is just coming to this piece of not needing. Yeah. And therefore there's m- much to give, but I can't be there all the time. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think you can be all there, be there all the time. I think you got to work. It's a, you get there in, in brief glimpses and that's where the good shit comes from. Right. But um, yeah, I think people go like, if I'm content, if I'm happy, if I have enough, if my identity is not tied up in, won't I stop moving forward? And it's like, actually, no, you're going to make better work, I think. Mm. I, I, at least I do. Like when, if I'm writing and I'm thinking about like, oh, this is going to prove those people wrong. This is going to make so much money. You know, this is uh, like when I'm sitting there envisioning all the success, not only am I like not actually thinking about the thing in front of me, which mm-hmm. is like I should be thinking about. It's like you, you should be not thinking about winning the World Series. You should be thinking about the pitch you got to throw, hmm. right? But I think I'm. I think that like toxic smallness or whatever is also. I think the reader can sense it. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like when you're coming from a place where you're pure and you're connected and you really mean it and you're sincere. That's the best you. It's like if you're trying, if you're if you're trying to pull, if you're if you're like meeting someone and you're trying to like impress them, that's when you're the least impressive. The, yeah, and I, I agree with you. I think that you know when I think people can feel your intention, yeah. but I think what's sad about the era we live in now, people feel what they think your intention is more than your actual intention you know what i'm saying because yeah. based off whatever position you may be in if you throw something out there they're not gonna think it's genuine are they not gonna think it's really because you know yeah you care about the work or it's <laughs> only like 280 yeah. 280 characters that's like a fraction of a person you yeah. know like we're not dealing with each other we're dealing with each other through these misleading mediums even Jesus. when you deal with each other though it's like do you ever find yourself pulling back on your natural reaction out of fear that that person might think you want something from them that you actually don't. 
Sure. You know, like a, a, like a, per, a person in a position of power. You you kind of just want to be like, man, I just love everything you do. I think you're so great. Da, da, da. But uh, if I say that, they're going to think that I'm trying to work them or get some kind yeah. of thing out of them. I just, should just, I should just say it. Yeah. I should just not give a fuck, even if, if they think that, right? If, if it's a real... If it's a, if you can dig a little deeper, meaning like it's not generic. Don't be generic. Like, ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Quote an actual Andrew Schultz joke. Right. Tell right. me a line out of Ryan Holiday's book. Then I know it's real. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not gonna front. I overhear conversations sometimes, and I'll be like, <laughs> that motherfucker ain't. It. But when I hear like, yo, I, I remember in this, you know, this such and such chapter, he quoted a line in a movie. I'm like, okay, yeah. he's really, he really fucks with that person. Yeah, yeah. So you know? it has to, it has to seem. Authentic. It has to seem genuine. It, We're not seem. It, it has, has to, to be. be. It has yeah. to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah I think yeah. you can just tell. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you, you say keeping a journal gets you closer to stillness. Yeah, like we're talking about getting to that place of of what like it's like I want to I want to take all the all those nasty weird thoughts and like put them down on paper. You know, purge like, them. Pr- yeah, get rid of them. Like don't carry them around. It's yeah, like yeah. it's like windshield don't wipers. Don't put them on Twitter. Yes. Right. I think that <laughs> yes. is the smart lesson that we've learned. Yes. Right. No, no. Don't think this shit out loud. Yeah. Think it private. Like it, the journal is your safe, your safe space. What about a good group chat? Ooh. With like minded, fucked up thinkers. <laughs> like, like, group chat. <laughs> <laughs> that saved us a lot of bad tweets. <laughs> hey, guys, just getting this off the chest. <laughs> that's all. That's it. That's all. I just want to know that if this one ripped. It was a good reaction. Like, that's it. Y'all you know, know it was funny? That's, that's, that's all. <laughs> don't need the whole world to know. There's a couple people. That's how our validation matrix has changed. It doesn't no. need to be Twitter. I think with like athletes, particularly young ones, it's like people, ha- it's like no one said like, hey, you can have a thought and you don't have to tell 2 million people. Right. Like you can be mad at someone and keep that to yourself. Yeah. Right. Unless you're doing it like uh, Gucci's doing it probably to get attention. Like if you're doing it, deli- like I like when a coach clearly got a technical on purpose to rally the players right. like that I respect but it's like when you're so jerked around by your remote you can't stop yourself from saying something like the the Trump you know the Trump tweets where yeah. it's like it's so obviously a bad idea but oh, he dude. cannot not do when it he was going all caps like marrow <laughs> Bro, that was that that's how I know he was going through it when yeah. he did all caps man I get anxiety when I don't say what I want to say though Cause I, that, I, I I be beating myself up like y'all should have said that. that I should have said that. Yeah, that's to me. That's what the journal's for. That's what like your wife is for. You know, like that's what your friends are for. And then like what you put out in the world, you go like, is this the best version of me? Yeah. You know, it's like this. Is this who I want to be? You know, when it's the worst when you're on TV and like you're doing like a panel show and you. You think of it, but you're like, hey, I'm not going to say it. And then somebody else says it, and you're like, uh, fuck! <laughs> Is that ego? I think a little bit. Uh, so uh, th- there's an Emerson thing. He says, in other people, we see our own rejected thoughts with like an alienated majesty. Like He's like, we see the things that we were too scared to do in other people, mm-hmm. and, and we go, ah. You know, I think that's what you're feeling a little bit. We, we talked about the toy earlier. Before you get out of here, I want to yeah. talk about Satori again. What is Satori? That's the moment of enlightenment. That's the moment when you've slowed things down, when you've done the work, when you've done the reading, you've gone to, th- like, oh, you know, when you dude. have that breakthrough in therapy, you're I like, I thought that was oh. that number game when the square. What is that? Uh, I don't even know what that is, but I know, yeah. Sudoku. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. No, Satori is when you go, oh, I've been doing this for 20 years because I really just want my dad to be proud of me. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, so yeah, dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, like that, that's what that is. Or you go, Oh, this is what makes life. Like uh, to me, I have it with moments when I kid, I go, Oh, this is, this is happiness. So what, it's, I mean? like, what you call a breakthrough it. basically. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I love what you said. You said you cannot get the tutorial by focusing on what's obvious or by sticking with the first thought that pops into your head. Yeah. And it makes me think of comedians. Because what sure. makes a good comedian is not focusing on the obvious. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not saying what everybody else is saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I hear from people that they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna like they'll they'll like dictate a book, right? They're like, these are my thoughts. It's a book, and it's like actually no, the book is like the iterate. It's like the the joke is not like I had this idea. Very rarely, I imagine, does a joke come out fully formed. It's you have the Never. the idea of the joke, and then it's the process of refining, and you might change out every single word over yeah. a six month period until you get it down. It's like you distill it down to its absolute essence and best. Mm-hmm. That's what writing is, and I think that's also like what Satori. It's not just like. Oh, I get it. It's this. It's like no, you got to be. This got to be rolling around in your head. And you got to talk about it from every. It's it's work, man. Mm-hmm. It's like 
like when they go, um, you know, a lot, there's these Zen koans where it's like, you know, what is the sound of, uh, one hand clapping? What, what, what was, did your face look like before you were born? These are like insane questions, mm-hmm. but it's the point of like, you got to think about that for like 10 years and then magically whatever it means comes to you. Why did you start caring about this stuff? What do you mean? Like, well, well, why were you drawn to this? I think I'm just trying to figure out what, what it is, you know, like, I'm just like, that's, that's what I do is like, what, what are we here for? What is life? What, what is, is life? What's the right way to live? That's what, to me, that's what philosophy is about. And that's why I love. Are we figuring out, <laughs> are we figuring out what is life once you have abundance? Well, it's easier, right? That's what the hierarchy of needs is. It's yeah. like, look, first you got to have food, yes. you got to have shelter, yes. you got to not be abused. Yes. And then you get there. Um, there's but, there's a difference between survival and living. Thriving. And thriving, thriving, yes. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah, I thought about this a lot. Like, like, so few human beings get to the point where they can stop working to live. Yeah. And that means they're actually living they're not surviving like of course i'm still surviving i make yeah. a great amount of money but i'm still surviving because i gotta yeah. keep working or else yeah yeah sure. i'm not gonna live is that what you're trying to figure out are you trying to figure out living opposed so. to surviving i think so and do those same principles help people who are still surviving yeah yeah i think i think what we should be doing is learning from the people who have actually gone ahead out. yeah right yeah, like yeah, yeah. i think to, so many people are like oh fig-, like no let's we want to like uh, there's a quote i have in the ego book it's like any fool can learn by experience i want to learn from the experiences of others he always quotes you on that oh nice yeah we're build we're building and so yeah it's like i'm maybe i'm a little bit ahead of some people but other people are way ahead of me and we're i think we're all just working on the same project yeah there's a uh there's something that always sticks with me it's like uh, every broke person you talk to thinks when they get money they'll be happy and yeah. every rich person you talk to is like money is not the key to happiness. yes that's a right. fact though but you got to get money to realize to, that but you have though. to get money to realize it. it's hard to take advice from people sure. that's that's the beauty of like like true communicators is they can communicate an emotion that they feel that someone hasn't even experienced yet and the person who hasn't experienced it Trust them. Yeah, sure. That's the tricky part about yeah. writing a book like this even. Of course. Yeah. Look, and the thing is like different books will hit you at different times. So yeah. like, that's why I'm a big proponent of rereading and working out and all that. So that's actually a, I shouldn't say that on here, but that's actually a book I want to do. Is what? Uh, Cause we always, uh, you know, pick up books based off successful people. You know what I mean? What about I the things books you, about failure? Yeah. What about the things? <laughs> no. What about the things you learned from people who, didn't just fail they are real failures like yeah crackheads yeah yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying no for real like you can yeah. learn a lot from crackheads in the hood like like i want to write something from that perspective because a lot of times the things that we didn't do is because we saw other people make those mistakes before us of course. Oh, dude, you know what i'm saying there's uh i mean Chappelle. i think went early on in his career he would say he would watch the people that were great at comedy and the people that were bad to find out what not to do yeah. and what to do. And I'm sure you do that with radio. I'm sure we all do that. If you're really paying attention, like even like athletes, ah, that work's not going to move because of that. Okay, let me get that out of here. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Word. My man, Ryan Holiday, uh, Stillness is the Key, is out right now. Uh, you can get it wherever you buy books. Um, give me your Twitters and Instagrams and all that good stuff, Ryan. At Ryan Holiday, pretty much everywhere. And then at Daily Stoic. And uh, yeah. Oh yes, the Daily Stoic. You know, I, I read the Daily Stoic every single morning. Like that's one. That's one I of three so affirmations that I take in every morning. All uh, right, let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, thank you, Ryan Holiday, for pulling up on us. I don't know where Dwayne is going to insert that in this podcast. We gave him over two hours today. Yo, my, my I came late. I'm sorry. I thought we were recording at ten. So if it's a little out of order, we kind of start with us, and then Ryan's in, and then he leaves, yes. and then he comes back, and I'm not there. But it, it was. Is it, it is, was. Sorry, we're a day late, man. We've been running around. Um, I was in. LA this weekend um, just doing what I was doing I'm, I'm on the way to Atlanta now so we're gonna name this podcast Lateness is the Key Ooh. okay Lateness is the mm. Key Andrew was in Australia yes you working baby but you better know better late than clever hey huh yeah. <laughs> that sounds good I, I'm, okay <laughs> but uh, as always if you listen to this podcast you think we're smart you think we're intelligent you think we're brilliant you're absolutely right but if you think we're just if you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit and neither does Alex Jones you're right too it's the brilliant this podcast thank you for listening and this podcast has been brought to you by BetterHelp whatever struggles you are facing from depression anxiety trauma and grief BetterHelp can connect you with a professional counselor in a safe private online environment it's so convenient you can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well 
and chat and text with your therapist. And anything you share is completely confidential. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Our listeners get 10% off your first month with the discount code IDIOTS. So why not get started? Simply go to betterhelp.com slash idiots and fill out the questionnaire to get matched with a counselor you'll love today. 